call the meeting to order. Hopefully uh, our other two members will show up. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Sam? Yes, could you please add, um, add or remove um, volunteer members at EMS? And then add and review, uh, review and approve um, mowing proposal. Next, uh, approve the minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes of May 6th. Second. We may have to move this because we don't have three of us and I wasn't here. No way. Okay. Okay. You can, you can, you can still approve, approve, still approve one. Okay. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Community concerns. Do we have community concerns? I guess that's me, maybe. Huh? Go ahead, JB. Just wanted to make kind of a brief statement. Sometime soon, you're going to have some zoning changes come up that involve the municipal parking lot. And as you know, I own the former Morris Oak video building across the Hutchins Street. The light? The lot. The and the uh, LHP is looking at developing that into a number of apartments. And it's based on the new change that would be in effect if, if, if you and the development group, okay, go ahead with the new plans. And we just wanted you to know that that's on the board. And given that, in my feeling, for close to 20 years, the town's been trying to concentrate buildings and apartments and people and people who might buy in downtown businesses and stuff like that. And, uh, housing department wants to put uh, 18 apartments in that building on a three-story basis. There is not sufficient parking unless the parking lot is allowed to remain with the same statement it has. That not, does not mean we have to use those, means we might have to at some time. All right. So just given the long-term plan of the town and the fact that I know over the years there's been a lot of pressure on the downtown parking lot, okay? And there's gonna be more, you're gonna hear from Dan on his side of this whole thing too, if we wanna to go to size, which I don't wanna do right now, okay? Mm -hmm. But that that's our concern that you know now, before there's a lot of chit chat you hear from everybody, but the one housing partnership will not go through unless there's, it remains pretty much the same. With the, the statement that's in there now, okay, yep. Yeah, is Todd proposing? Yeah, who knows what's going to come? I don't know what's going to come. This is all going to come up within the next month or so. So, and, and so that lot is uh, approved to have up to 18 units. It will be. It would be after the zoning. After the zoning, yeah. You guys are going to vote, yes, right, Todd? They're going to vote. Anyway, we don't want to go in a great length today. We're here. It right. should right. have been just better documented and all that. Right. So, yep. We're here just to ask, hopefully, for your, for your help on that. So, that it so it stays the same, that part of it. No, you, it, it will be new zoning for that law. Yeah. Or they can only do nine, eight or nine units there now. Right. And they will do the project for that three units. You're yeah. talking that lot where you alone there? Uh, on Hutchins lot. Street, yes. in the middle of Hutchins Street. Yeah, I know what I'm Right beside Barbers. Yeah. Eight or nine lots, I mean building units in there. Eight or nine units. Is this going to be for working people or homeless or welfare? Um, I don't. I think they said they said moderate income, but I, I, I don't even want to get into any of that. Okay, but I just want you to know it's happening. There's probably going to be an issue. That would be a multiple story building. Right. And they're looking at 14 to 18 units. And I think that's what Todd's proposing for more density in the downtown area. It's so. not just that lot, it's the, it's the downtown area, right, Todd? Help me out here. Yes. Yes, okay. Daniel, yeah, um, just Todd and I have both been working on it. Right. The concern right now that I have is, um, and once again, we're working on it, is that it's the overnight winter parking in that lot. So if there are residents there, there's the opportunity you know, to put some parking maybe on site, but probably not all for what the zoning requirements would be for that many residential units. So the concern is, is all right, so if we do this and we have these residential units, right now there's, you know, Todd's been doing some counts. 
in the winter overnight parking. There may not be enough parking there. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to look at maybe trying to reconfigure the existing parking lot to do more, um, to do some things. But right now, just looking at it and you know, listening to the street crew and, you know, some of the other problems we have, particularly with overnight parking in the winter, I'm not sure if we have enough parking there to support that. That doesn't mean we're not looking at some other options, but... And if, this is not a request, as some right, of the businesses right. on Portland Street have made in the past, for designated spaces, this is in no way that this would be catch as catch can. You know? right. yeah, yeah. And some of the tenants may not even have cars in this Some won't project. because of the income level. That's why they yeah. want to stay downtown with the project, right. so it's walkable and easy to anyway, And anyway, we don't want to take more time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're just, Dan's on top of that. I'm just, yeah. okay. we're just asking yep. for you to consider. Yep. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks for coming thank in, you. guys. For sure. All right, we have. Uh, can I can I get a comment on that? Go ahead, Buckley. Well, one reason one reason to solve the problem is part of the mandatory underground parking. Other right. well, towns do. They don't they don't become into that anyway. Right. Land gets scarce. That might be difficult. <laughs> that, on that lot. Yeah, Marianne. Bob, has the timeline expired to remove that planter now? Yes. Yes. So it has. And that's on. We, we don't want to do it this summer because of the, the downtown paving that's going on. But it's on. Um, it is, yes. It is. Yeah. Uh, community? <coughs> yeah, I, yeah, I am. Go ahead, Buckley. My, my, I got a couple of things. I mean, um, the snow plow crews in the wintertime. Let me tell you what. Um, if they're lazy, I mean, they do a lot of work, but when it comes to plowing, they don't know how to plow because, I mean, I, I've been working on these trees to get them to bloom over here. Uh, West Coast. Magnolia takes forever to get acclimated, and then they start blooming. There, lo and behold, the village crew, they go over there, they rip them out and just leave them there on the ground. They're over there laying on the ground now blooming, but they're all ripped apart. Where is that, by Queen? West Coast, over by DeMars' yep. apartment on yep. the corner there, but you can see it laying over there. Um, that's not their land. And, and, uh, it's, it's, it's state land. That's on state land there. Everybody seems to think they can they can use state land to pull their pictures of snow on that trash thing. Uh, and I, I think it should be replaced. And on, on the uh, Stafford Avenue, I had two, uh, I, there was three there, but the other one's dead now too, but the town, I don't know who runs the loader, I don't care. But just because they think they, they, got, they got snow problems, they waste enough time moving snow when they have to. They took out two six foot. Uh, I, I talked to the state about it. I've been contacting Dan about replacing this stuff. Uh, is that across the road from the trailer place there on that corner? Yeah, right across the road. Right across the road. And I know, and I know the light lot, the light lot for there. They've been building every year. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not the town land. If I put snow on your town property or village property, if I'm not like you, probably make you pay for it. I probably would. I think the town should replace these. Does that fall into the right of way? No? I don't know. I'd have to look back at the maintenance agreements on what we have to do there. I, I don't know. The first I heard of it. I'm just bringing it up because they, they get yeah. worse every year. Right. Good Good to bring it up. I mean, you're going to start taking them out when you feel like it. But, and I know who did it. I'm not going to mention names. So they're in one Because they're arrogant. Don't care. But, and I, they write our buck. We put them in. If you lose one day, Lily, what they want to crucify you. Right. We got a we got a big enough method to run about which I talked to the state about. And they I know we're not gonna I, I don't want to, I mean that just cut it all down for a second term, but you don't need a you do not need a package any longer to work in the right way over there. That's for instance, I, I I had a long uh, discussion with them about it. They they don't make them do it in Jacksonville. Uh, and so we don't have to do it here either. They know. Okay. They ought to just take, cut that place down there and pay the grade. So, I just want the, uh, somebody to talk to the town, the town employees and the village. Yeah. Um, we'll look into that, Dan. You guys can, I'll be watching for it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you're yeah. out there. Yep, I know. All right. That's all I got. Thank you. Okay, we've got something at the ratio van, James Road. Yeah, I thought he was going to be here to see me, but anyway, it's already on the schedule. He came to see me about the potential of the town. Um, 
taking over James Road. It's the one that we have scheduled with the laundry um, for the, did it, uh, the 19th at 5.30. Mm -hmm. So I, I already put that one on schedule for anyone to meet with the board. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Do we have any more community concerns? We'll move. Oh, go ahead, ma'am. I'm concerned for the big tree by the gar community garden that looks like it's going to, like it's in the, within the four stakes that maybe where the bathroom is going to go. And uh, some of us at the garden, you know, have appreciated the shade and the, uh, uh, that that tree provides and the setting that it provides. And it seems very sad to have it go. And I don't know whether we were talking about, couldn't it just, the two stakes that are closest to the road be taken out and put over that much farther closer to the bench so that you could still have it within 10 feet of that, but we could keep the tree. And then the tree would help shade the bathroom so that they would be 190 degrees in the summer. <laughs> Anyway, that's just a concern. Yeah, um, just so everybody, it's just a preliminary layout. And actually, I think it's great there are people seeing what we're laying out. So Trish and I were down working on the layout where we could put the bathrooms. So there are some constraints there. Um, towards the front, you know, there's the road right away to this side of the town. There's the, a property line there between us and RK Miles property. There's a water main to the north. Um, and then we're trying to still maintain handicap access. So to put it in front of the tree um, doesn't work too well because- No, the other way, pushing it farther from the road. We could push it farther from the road, I think- 10 our, feet further from the yeah, road. I think our, tree there. We, we could put it farther back, and it, it is a consideration. Um, we're gonna have to watch the ability for us to still get the sewer line into the manhole, and we're, we're coming further and further away from our utilities. All of our utilities, the electric, the water, um, and the sewer are right there on that corner. We can't go towards the garden because that's in a flood zone, and there's, we we don't want we can't be on top of that water main. So we could go back. I think you know the only consideration that we had for that is the further away from the road, the further away it is from a set of visible eyes on it at some point in time. So, but that is a preliminary location for it. So, and then you know we also talked about you know we don't want to take down tree any more than anybody else, but we could put more trees around back behind it so if the board gets a chance to go down and see where those stakes are and and if you want to come down to constrain the strains once again there's a, a big water main there that we can't go any further you know towards the park the property line we really can't come any further towards the rk miles property there's a huge rock there um closer to the road so the only place it could go would be behind the tree and it has to go quite a bit further back from the tree to make sure we don't get in the root ball. And that's the other thing that we're really trying to avoid to get into the root ball for the foundation work. I know I like to go down and take a look at yeah. you know, exactly yeah, so that's carved in stone, but you know, that's where we want to look the layout. So. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure there's a place we could buy some trees if we need. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any chance that tree could be moved? That's the whole point, I think. This is yeah, it's about $100,000. Yeah, okay. I wanted that box, well, box. I, I, you're asking that. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. not good. Just don't plow snow onto it. Yeah. Well, if you get too close to the road, though, you're going to be flying in the future. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, so that's what we're really trying to avoid. Okay. It's led this light, I think, pretty well. Yeah. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Uh, will we set a site media at some point to look at it? Sure, or? I can put that on the next agenda. We mm -hmm. can go down and start there maybe and take a look at it. Right. I'd like to look at that. So will someone get back to Barb about what you've decided? No. Yes, Dan. Because I think yeah. it's a, a concern that's not only, I know there's a lot of logistics, but I think there is a concern beyond, you know, that should be considered humanistically. Yeah. Old trees are nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. If Dan has your contact information, he'll... He'll, 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 he'll see me out there. I'll be having my arms around and hugging it. So I'll see you. Where are you? Uh, yeah, okay. I signed in. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Liquor control. Yes. Make a motion to go on the liquor control board. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So fast. So, um, Lost Nation, you've already approved their outside liquor yes. consumption permit, but they want to change, they want to amend it. And mm -hmm. move, did you get the picture? Yeah. So, they want to move where the fence is closed um, to the other side where the fence is open. Yeah. Um, and then put a couple Adirondack chairs in there. 
And this should really say additional. This is going to be additional than what they have outside now. Right. In addition to. Yes. Yeah, in addition to what they have. Has Richard seen this? Yes, I've seen it. What do you think? I don't have any objections. We've had no problems over there. We've run it pretty well. Okay. I make a motion to amend uh, and approve the outdoor consumption for last week's meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, <coughs> any opposed? Motion is passed. Do we have any others? Do I hear a motion to come out? Motion to come out. Second. And a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Next, old business, which is the skateboard park discussion. To who wants to open that up? Dan, do you want to? Sure, I, I think it was brought to the select board about a month ago. Some discussion about the, the current state of the Oxbow Park, or the, the skate park of the, the park, and it, it is you know a safety hazard currently. Um, I don't you know I don't think there's any doubt about that. But I think that the broader. I'm sorry. The, the, I'm sorry. The, about the, the skateboard park um, in the current condition and. You know, it, it is in bad shape and is it currently a safety hazard. And then I think the broader discussion you know, for the community is, is how to move forward kind of thing. So that's where I'll kind of cap it off. So. Go ahead, ma'am. Should I speak into the microphone? Can you hear me or do I need to? Can I just speak, you speak loud? Speak loud enough. Can you introduce yourself? Can you introduce yourself, please? My name is Celine Nelson. I live in Morrisville. And my son and some of his friends originally um, constructed the park in, I think, 2012. Um, it was a real community effort. And they got money for, for, for metal, for asphalt, for uh, wood. We, we worked together to have work days and people, all kinds of people from the community got together and worked together on, on work days and it was really heartwarming to see and it was wonderful. Um, Richard Bowen from the Johnson State Co uh, Skate Park helped. Um, he was working with uh, the, uh, Casey Romero who's a really good resource about skate parks. So is Richie. He's, he's traveling about right now but there's a lot of people that could really give input into the reconstruction, revitalization, if that's something the town wants. The biggest thing I see from all of what happened is once Richie left, once Isaac left, once the kids that were here left, there wasn't the community, the community of people that were really pushing it forward, it, it, was, it was gone. So there wasn't any ownership of it, there wasn't any maintenance of it. And I mean, it's really sad because it was provided a lot of activity and recreation for the, for the town youth. So I just want to tell you, it's a long history, and I don't think that, I do believe that it is really in disrepair, but I really believe that it serves a really important function for our recreational outlets for the kids in town, and that they can be in a place, and they won't be skating all town and bugging all the businesses and everything else, but I really think it's important, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Do you have any other comments? Yeah, I'd really like to see like a concrete park the current state of the park doesn't look very appealing and then when you leave it to be right. not taken care of then you just have riffraff hanging out on it right. because it's not a exactly. place where I'm going to bring my six year old son right. Right. there's certain aspects of the park was kind of a lot of stuff put into a small space which also kind of made it tough to skate um, I take my kid to Johnson and I go to uh, Waterbury Skate Park, you know, those parks are part of the community, they're all kept well, they're painted all one color so that they're, you know, pleasant to look at. And the concrete park is a great idea. There's a Tony Hawk Foundation that will match money provided in the community, assuming you meet all the requirements. They help put together a concrete structure that will last long and look good and will be enjoyed. I think Derby has one from the Tony Hawk Foundation. Does anyone else know about that? Well, from what we've heard, the Tony Hawk Foundation, they, you can apply for it twice and it's up to $15,000 is yeah, what I heard. Yeah, I don't know much and about it. A concrete park just in a ballpark would be 300000 so it's not going to get us there. Uh, the waterfront for the park in Burlington was a uh, Tony Hawk Park, and it was a $2.5 million skate park. Okay. So there are higher rates. Yeah. Yeah, I guess there's a guy named Michael Parker that lives in uh, Hardwick that 
actually has a really helpful tool to put the concrete in place. It's like a hose that kind of sprays it like a thicker concrete, and he's down to help. He just needs like help like getting people interested in funding and stuff. He can't really spend time doing that because he also needs to get paid to do what he does, but he's down to help. He did the Newport Park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they just did uh, somewhere down in Waitsfield too. I think um, they revamped one of their concrete sections. Um, but I think also for that footprint and that size, concrete lasts a long time. And I, I, I still think there's worth in some of the material down there, uh, more as I mean, salvage, I guess. It's not very good as it is. Different, there's bad transitions. But I really think that if we take some of that material, maybe we get some of the money back, and concrete will last 40 years. You know, they've been doing it in the Northwest for a long time, and it's kind of spread east. It's a really good long-term investment um, and not just another 10 years or so that will outlast uh, different generations. Um, um, comment. Oh, <coughs> um, I just wanted to say, um, so the, the rec committee uh, has had some teenagers come in a few months ago about the, the, um, the park and are excited to be participants also in helping to do whatever is going to happen, but are advocating for the park. Also, all of the folks who are here, I don't know if people have signed in, but people who care about the skate park, we, um, as a rec, uh, Parks and Rec Committee for the town, we uh, have a subcommittee that's all about the skate park and revisioning the Oxbow, so I'd love to capture, I don't know how Erica or Sarah, or how we best do that, but to make sure we capture who you are, um, because we want to, this is the beginning of a process, and we really want to make sure that we get more input and have, especially, like you showed up tonight, and that's fantastic, and we want to make sure that we uh, keep that going and that momentum going. So, I just also know there are some young people here who might want to have a chance to speak, and I know Adar and Yona have a few words. Go ahead, Come on. I like the um, old skate part, but... Um, I think when you are in the bowl and you go up, there's one, and one side got a splinter there, and um, when you're going up, there's metal pipes. <clears throat> so if a skateboarder is going up, I think on the new one, there should be like um, a curve. So maybe um, skateboarders can like, go up and not like have to like jump or like fall off to the um, back. Thank you. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No? Do you have any ideas, Yona? No, these guys love using the skate park, and, and it's true, just as a parent, especially being at um, Wednesday Night Live and supporting all the town events, you know, that they have to ask if they can go across, and I feel torn myself as a parent of, that it's across the parking lot, and I think in revisioning, I'd love to see something, whether it's at the Oxbow or somewhere else. I mean, I know there's a lot of input, but to make sure that it's in a safe, place um, for the kids to be, where they can be supervised as well, and um, that it's good for not just kids, but kids, I mean, people of all ages really, really use it, and so we'd love to have that resource uh, still in town for people of all ages to use. Mary Ann. I think the location is unsafe. I hear what she's saying. When I've been at Wednesday at Live, I see kids running across the parking lot, mm -hmm. and, and they're out of sight, and there are a lot of people that Oxbow. But but I agree with this gentleman who said when it looks derelict, it attracts derelicts. And I think that that has happened down there. So my question is, can it be torn down soon for safety? And then can you consider rebuilding it better and elsewhere? Sir, you had a question. Uh, yeah, I just have something to say. I'm pretty, I'm relatively new to the community, and uh, I'll be honest, I, you know, I was moving to Morrisville, I was really excited about the here at the skate park. And I went down there and I was pretty, you know, pretty torn up. I've been skateboarding for 15 years. I was part of, you know, numerous skate park scenes in Boston and New England growing up. And I just want to kind of sit like, <coughs> and speak to the intrinsic value of having a solid skate park in a community, what, how the positive uh, outcomes that, that can occur. It's a, uh, spot for you know youth to really take um, uh, like kind of like the pride in, in, it, in something and they can kind of maintain it and police it. That's it, that's it, it's a good skateboard. We want to take care of it. 
you know, with Delmar right now, it's not something that people want to take pride in. So I think if we can move in that direction and take something that people would be prideful over, it would be great. Thank you. You guys have some comments? I, the first step in this entire process <laughs> is community ownership. That's We've right. got a great representation here. It's going to take that energy to continue over a long period of time. This is not uh, a this summer project, folks. If we're talking about a concrete structure, this is something that's going to need design work. We need to make sure that the location that the park goes into is going to last us for 40 years. Uh, there, there's a lot of considerations with this. So I would encourage you all to meet up with our rec committee at some point and, and uh, get a phone number perhaps for another night conversation. Around specific for if you want to be like involved. I know there, there's um, the sign in for the meeting, but in addition, I'm passing something around. So being that the subcommittee already formed through our rec committee? The yeah, it's just, it just formed at our last meeting, but our, our idea was to try to now at this point gain more membership into that subcommittee of people who are interested in build that. So the success of any project like this is based on the foundation that forms starting with the people involved. So that's, right. um, that's what I encourage you to do is, is, is uh, become involved and stay involved. For us up here, as stewards of the community's tax dollars, it does a lot of it come down to dollars and cents. It does not mean that we're against youth. It is about us making our dollars stretch as far as we can. So that's why location, permanency, I personally am not for another wooden structure if we have to revisit this at $100,000 expense every 10 years. I think that's a waste of taxpayer dollars. I would be more in favor of the hardened structure, but again, it's a dollars and cents issue with our taxpayers, and so I encourage you all to be creative with your thought process. Look down at the Oxbow Park, remember flood zone, <laughs> but look down there about positioning. Perhaps that location of parking lot is not the best spot. So just all those things in mind as you're looking down there and you're thinking about this process, uh, be creative with that, okay? And uh, but just keep the energy moving forward. It's really important. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay, I, I guess I'm really concerned about the location too because of the events that are happening down there take more, need more parking room. And, um, in, and if you're going to redo a skateboard park, you're going to need more parking room for that. And I mean, if you're going to have a successful one, that's going to bring cars in too and people in and so forth. So, you know, I just, I don't see the two mixing together at all, being able to leave it where it is now. I mean, and I had a son that skateboarded. I mean, that was his whole life for many years. And the whole other whole thing is for these years that you're doing it, by the time you get it all fixed and ready and can ride it, He's on to cars and girls and whatever else comes along, you know, at that point. So it, you have to think about it. Long, long-term planning is not going to be the same people that want it right today that are going to use it five years, six years from now. By the time you get it, yeah. get the money and get it, the permits and get it constructed. Yeah. Go ahead, ma'am. I just want to respond to that. I think there are some people in this room that are in their 40s who are still skateboarding. So um, there are people who can continue doing that. Oh, yes. Um, but I also um, just wanted to say that um, our question is, um, how do we find out where the possible locations at the Oxbow or other locations would be um, in terms of planning? I, early on, I would say that this, this whole conversation is a way advanced for where we're at. I mm -hmm. think, first of all, what you need the, the, the committee gets together, I would think dimensions are important. Dimensions, right. Because dimensions are going to be where you're going to be able to fit that footprint. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can't even speak to where it would possibly be. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying be creative. Mm -hmm. Understand it's a floodplain, so we have some considerations there. But look around, and, and I mean, I've got thoughts myself, but I want the committee not to be narrow-minded. I want them to, I want you folks, whoever gets involved, to be really creative about it, think about footprint, how it might fit down there aesthetically as well as you know as, as the location where it is. But mm -hmm. I'm really happy to see as much uh, participation here. I'm 56. I don't feel as well as 45. So <laughs> I won't be on the skate park, but I think it is a great resource for our youth here, and uh, I really hope that this energy continues. Yeah, I just wanted to say too that I I'm really happy to have a group, and I think the group is a foundation of getting this thing going. But I feel like the first step is to tear down what's there because it's very unsafe. It's, uh, it's not going to be something we're going to be able to rejuvenate or fix up. And for me or for us, I think the safety concern is huge. 
Um, that's why we made the, the idea of closing it. But I think the first step is taking that down. And that doesn't mean we're not going to do another one. It, it shows by the group here that we'll make plans and get together, the ad hoc group or whatever, get together and form a plan over a long term. But the first step in my mind is to take that one out because it's, uh, it's unsafe. So I think we should take most of it out, but there is like a paid zone with the ramps, like the first part that's closest to RK Miles. I think that could like have some work done to it and make it legitimate enough that's, you know, safe and something to hold people over, you know? And we can take a look at that. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I just had a, a question and a couple comments. Um, first of all, I'm just curious as to, you know, is the select board really considering um, putting money into this project? Is that something that you really consider? Because I think as a community, uh, we've, we put a lot of money together in the past and watched it go down the drain. Uh, my first thought is the hockey rink that we all put money into, and we watched it now become uh, her checks. You know, and that was something that was supposed to be for the community, supposed to be for the youth, and we just watched it get washed away. I think that this skate park is is another place where a group of people got together. They had a great idea. They did their best but there wasn't a lot of that town funding and support. They did it on their own. That's right. And so we get what we got, and it's, it, it is, it's unsafe. I mean, my son enjoys, has enjoyed skating down there since I had to hold his hand so he could drop in and learn how to do it. Um, and it's been, a, it's been a great experience for them. But I, I also personally think that it, it, it needs to be torn down. It's, it's unsafe right now. Um, and I would like to know whether whether the, you're really going to put money into it because I know it is a big expense, but we spend money all over the place in this town for things that aren't really for our youth, for our future. We just spend it. Um, and my other question or, or comment would be, uh, my son and I were looking into the ordinances uh, in the town and you can't skateboard in the road, you can't skateboard in a parking lot, so that takes and you can't skateboard at the school. We found that out afterwards. I had to tell him no more skateboarding at the school because I won't let him go to the skate park anymore because it's not safe and, and now it's been closed. So is there a possibility that some of those ordinances might be reconsidered for this interim process when you tear it down? We have been talking about that. We haven't done it yet, but we, we brought that up. Yeah. It's a possibility, but I, I wanted to respond to your your statement. You're right. I remember very much about the crew building and, and everybody that came together and uh, raised tons of money and sweat equity and you know I think it was in the, in the area of a million and a half dollars that was put into that through you know everything that happened donations and equity and everything and, and then in the end it was a group of people that were going through with their kids in hockey at the time a group of doctors actually mm -hmm. and the kids grew up and they went away and, and they kind of fell you know and, uh, and then it was an expensive thing that the town couldn't get behind and buy and try to rejuvenate. You know, it's, we're not in the business of running a business, you know, right. and uh, so we couldn't do that. But it reminds me a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that we don't have the kind of money as a town. All of us on the board have to think fiscally and we have to think, uh, you know, how much the taxes are going to be for, for everybody, you know, and the people, greatest amount of people that might use it, you know. Um, so I, I feel for you. I understand what you're, what you're saying. The uh, the one thing I would add to your other comment, I think um, it's impossible for us to say at this juncture whether we can say with certainty whether we can support a future project. We have um, not a lot of ideas of exactly what it's going to cost. There's been an, a large number thrown around. I think it would be pretty challenging to put to the taxpayers, but there might be other options. So I think the best route is working through Parks and Rec to come up with some ideas. Uh, everything I've heard today speaks further to the importance of having a plan for the Oxbow um, so that we kind of have some ideas of what today's use might look like and in the future. So I think um, we do have some systems in place now where we could start to put that together between parks, uh, between the Recreation Committee and town employees. Um, and I think there are further grants that we can look into as well. So um, I 100% agree. I think we need some, uh, we need more recreation op uh, opportunities for our youth 
uh, which could include uh, a skate park. So I would love to see something happen. Well, in the interim, if it takes all those years to make it, it would be nice to be able to take a piece of it at least and rejuvenate some of it, uh, reconstruct some of it as an interim until this, the park, the, the community grants that you could help us with and then what the committee comes up with, if you work together to then tear that all down and then open up something else. And historically, the, the, that committee went to the school to try to put the skate park? No. Yeah. They went to the uh, crew land, they said no, not in my backyard, and they finally, they were given, they were graciously given that spot in the floor plane at Oxbow, and that's why it's there. And that's well, the history. Yeah, that's I, the think history. You, I think you'll find the reason that they didn't want on the property wasn't because they don't support you, it's a liability. I understand. It's, it's all about saying. the liability and the safety I'm of that. Just saying. So yeah, I hear you. It's, it's frustrating because it's yeah. such a good sport for kids. Mm -hmm. It really right. is. Sure. Parenthetically, before I start on the park, schools probably aren't going to do this because it's their insurance policy. That's that right. That's what you Period. Bingo. Forget that. Right. Okay. Oxbow Park. Step one. Have a crew in there at 0800 tomorrow morning to tear it down, take it right down the bare ground, be done with it. Step two. Your park committee needs to develop a comprehensive plan for the whole park for the whole recreation system in town, but specifically the Oxbow Park. That plan would require some statistics. Who uses the park? For what purposes? What uses can the park be made given its floodplain issues, its size, and it is very, very small. It's a posted staff size park as, as generally parks go. What are the compatible and incompatible uses? How are you going to maintain what you build? How are you going to afford what you're going to build? Where are you going to get the money? The town owns the property. Ergo, the town is liable for what's on it. You can set up parents' groups. You can set up support groups. You can get a group that comes in here and wants you to build tennis courts. Why not? Don't do that because they're not going to be liable for it. People have left it alone. It's deteriorated to the point at which you, me, the taxpayer, are responsible for whatever happens down there, period. So you need a comprehensive plan. A skateboard park, concrete state skateboard park, is going to be minimum $200,000 to $250,000. I've heard $300,000 is a number. You also need a minimum. 10,000 square feet to have a credible skateboard park. That's a quarter acre. You don't have enough land down there to do it. You don't have enough money to build it. And you don't have, you don't have the funds and the will to maintain it and take on the liability. That's positive. <clears throat> so I, I think, so I think, <coughs> I respect your opinions, but I do think that's what the parks and rec uh, group can can start to vet out because there are varying opinions and varying yeah. uh, resources out there you that know, I've looked at. I'll even tell you something that concerns year. me. Though. The Park and Recreation Committee meets the first Wednesdays of the month at 8.15 in the morning. That's really going to invite the public to come in and have input. Somebody needs to address that issue. I think this is the first that. time I've been hearing about that as an issue, so we could take that into consideration. Yeah. Public participation only works if the public can conveniently come to me. And people who are in public service need to recognize that you don't meet at their convenience, you meet at the taxpayers or the public's convenience here. You know, at this point, it's a volunteer mm -hmm. committee. It's all volunteer people that get to go there when they can make it happen, you know, in their life. So right now, at this point, that's all it is. If you want to come to a meeting, you might be able to schedule it. 8.15 in the morning. Okay, fine. We could do it at noon. We could have tea or something. <laughs> the reality is, is that it's 
we did a survey, we started ad hoc, we became a committee, found a time when at least the committee could meet and when people could come, anyone who's emailed or been in touch, always been responsive and including that what they're talking about and hearing uh, that people want to be able to come at that at different times. There's always a time that some people can make and some people can't and we're happy to, I mean that's the least I think of the issues of changing the time of the meeting. Uh, we're, we're excited about what we've got in motion. Um, there, there are lots of us in the room, as well as some um, people who couldn't be here tonight. Um, and so, you know, exactly what our plan is. It's not just, a, we had a question on the survey last year that was about um, specifically how would you, how might you view Vision Oxbow Park? Um, like 215 people responded to the survey that was, um, had five questions. We have responses to that. We've got past information. Like we, we don't let anything go. Uh, you know, Morristown's been active in recreation for a long time. There's a lot of history. Um, Judy's been on other committees in the past. We're bringing all of that with us up to the present, um, and then taking it like um, Chris is saying, you know, to the next level. Looking at the whole park, not make any quick decisions, but knowing that uh, people have lots of opinions. Um, um, my uh, other son, Yona, wanted to make sure that I share something that he wanted to say about the park. Are you, do you want to say your song? No, he's not ready for that. But um, he said that sometimes um, a lot of people get a lot of splinters right now, like he's had, and that concrete would be much better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to ask a question, though. Is the committee been appointed by the select board? Yes. Is this a self yes. Yes. Okay. Did you think part of a parks department? It Does is. the committee keep minutes? Yes. 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 Are the minutes available to the public? Yes. On the website. Big pardon? They're on the website. They're on the website. All right. I think the, the planning phase that, that's ongoing for the use of the park, that, that is already in motion. So I, and I don't believe that there's any harm and a, a second group working on a plan for a skate park at the same time. And I think actually it's going to be helpful if those happen simultaneously because as that comprehensive plan you're speaking of is being formulated, this other group bringing together the, the statistics, the details they need for the skate park, if we wait until the plan is in place and then start the planning for the skate park at that point, we've lost a significant amount of time. I think they can run yeah. simultaneously and we can get a lot of help. And that was the plan from the last meeting, that this is happening a parallel process and um, just really trying to make sure we do whatever we can to get that information. I mean, we'd love everyone's support. Marianne, you're That quick. presumes that you've already decided that the skate park is going to be a part of Oxford. We, we haven't decided that at all, but we have to have information from this committee that's looking to form, reference the skate park. They are going to put information together that will work. They're a subcommittee of the rec park, rec committee. The rec committee is the one doing the comprehensive layout for the park. So it's all in-house within the one committee. So I'm, I'm not sure. I would love to hear solutions from you rather than more problems. I understand your concerns as a taxpayer, but I'm, I'm not hearing any possible solutions coming from you to the board. So I'm not sure what direction we're we were supposed to go with answering you. I'm, I'm, I'm confused on that piece. I, I think the, the rep committee is, is doing a great job in putting together a plan for the entire park. I think a subcommittee is formed already and more people can join that to work on the possibility of putting a skate park down there. And there's nothing that says a skate park is going to happen, but it certainly won't happen if we don't get a plan together. I just feel encouraged with so many people that showed up to mm -hmm. show interest. That, that's really key in this whole process. So that's great. I Mary Ann, you're um, I just wanted to remind the, the committee that however you acquire funds, um, if it's to the taxpayers for a tax rate, or if it's grants or other funds that might build the skate park, there has to be a process to maintain it, to fund it and maintain it, which is exactly what happens at the track at the school. So that's just a huge, huge piece that's got to be addressed, whatever gets built for recreation. It's a real important thing. Yes. Yeah, I've just been wanting to say that um, 
it doesn't need to be grandiose. Like you can start with a really small park and attract a lot of people. I mean, we skate, my son skates, not me, at Waterbury all the time and it's simple. It's a really simple park but people come there and they're respectful and there's all different age groups and they support each other. It's, it's really amazing to see. So it doesn't need to be a huge, huge park to start. To start. <laughs> I mean, if it did turn into something like that, would be great, but it doesn't need to be the waterfront. It could be something really small to start. Even like Justin said, you know, just maintaining that one small part. I think it's a, an old basketball court and they put some cement around it. Just maintaining that, keeping that for a while as, you know, in the interim could bring people back if it's taken care of and, you know, maybe some smaller features added to it. Just keeping the spirit alive might be you know, something to consider. Yeah, I like that. Even if we just brought it down to like two quarter pipes and a ledge, mm -hmm. just something on that slab. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, it's not that big of a deal, but that could totally be reasonable in salvaging just enough of some of the better pieces. There are some decent pieces in there. I read yeah. it a lot. And there are people interested in doing that kind of stuff. If they knew that they could come down and build things and like skate them, then that would be something they'd probably do rather than not. Yeah, I did have a gentleman reach out to me that he builds skate parks and uh, he could start off with a small section and build onto it or whatever over time. And um, it's very possible to do that. He's, he's in touch with the Rex, Rex committee and I believe he's gonna come and meet meet with him. Not, this is what the guy does all over the country. So, mm -hmm. And he does start small, like a little teeny area. Mm -hmm. you know, so it could be something that may be done in phases. Um, my thing is, what's there now has got to be taken yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. It's not safe. Yeah. <laughs> would the town take that out? Would that be town employees or would we need volunteers to this now? That's a good question. Brian, too. So, so one of my big thoughts is what we've been talking about on night tonight is you need to work together and get us some numbers and work together because it's not our, going to be our decision. When we come up with this in the end, we're going to go to the voters. Mm -hmm. So you've got to sell this to the voters. So you've got to come up with a plan that's going to work and hopefully the voters will vote for it. I know there are a couple of other people who wanted to just speak, and I see some young people also who would be great to hear their voices too. Um, before that happens, I'm curious as for like uh, next steps, people are saying let's tear it down immediately. There's also some salvageable parts, like the people who are really interested in trying to make that next step happen as a possibility of some transition, I think we really need to know who you are sooner than later because uh, you know if the select board is thinking we got to, it's unsafe to tear it down, but without the help of people who know what they're doing, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, and I want my kids to be safe if they're in that space. So I'm, you know, I think we need to get that information out soon. Also, um, the subcommittee um, subcommittees has we haven't met yet. We're waiting for this to happen to see what a next step will be when most people who are interested can meet. So I think that's, from our perspective, what we plan to do is to gather all the names here, plus people who couldn't come, and then figure out how we can uh, get something going online, you know, conversations, and then, you know, meeting in person. But I don't know. Uh, folks well, well again, again, that's another thing, too, because I know you mentioned somebody wants to come down, somebody you know, wants to come down and build something. I don't think just anybody should be building something there. It should be a... Somebody that's an engineer that knows how to make it fun. Any other comments? Chris. So I'd like to make a motion that we proceed with uh, the town tearing down the existing skate park uh, with consideration of salvaging portions of it. The highway crew can do it, but just as long as I know what I need to salvage and set aside, we can, yeah. we can do that. Maybe we could have some of the people that are that are have the knowledge about it to, to meet when it happens or before it happens, so we can, you know, save what we what still can be used. 
So what I just want to, if, if that's going to be the motion and that will pass, I want to make sure that those folks who are here who can help with that piece so it doesn't get lost, that that connection is made. And I'm not sure how to best do that. I've not got a list and I can email everybody, but I don't know if that's directly, like folks who are here directly to the select board now or to Dan. Maybe you can make a, a you know recommendation for how to... Well, the, the motion can happen now, but then we can set up a date once okay. you, everybody's met with Dan. Can I, can I make a recommendation on that? Yeah. What I'd really like to do, I think, makes the most sense is get your committee together and decide on what you want us to salvage, and then get some feedback. I mean, we can keep it fenced off and, and keep it secure. Let us know what you want us to salvage, so that way there's some thought that puts in it rather than us just going down and in a day's time trying to figure it out. So I think that would be a great first step for the, the committee to get together and say, yeah, we want to try to save these, you know, the saving the metal, saving, you know, the, the, the Jersey barriers that are there, something along that side, so that I know what to save, and we can pull yeah. that out first, yeah. and then, and then that's, you that's deal with the rest of it. There, if so. anything, just save the metal coping on the Jersey barrier. We get anything out there. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll yeah, figure we'll it out. We'll, yeah, we'll, I, we'll I, think, you know, a, I think that's a great first step for the committee. Yeah. And that yeah. way you guys got input so that I understand what you need me to do. Dan, is it possible for us to put, if when we get the information you need, to put the demolition date and time yes. on front porch form? Sure. Or yeah, website? Well, I think, you know, if, if the committee can get together, that subcommittee can get together and go take a look at it and give me some feedback, um, you yeah, know, we can make that work. I don't when see does that. Wednesday night live start? Uh, middle of June, June, I believe. June 14th or something? Good if it was it, done before that. I think it should be de demolished prior to that. If yeah. Possible. So it is, uh, it's three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. June 12th or So demolish it by June 7th. Whatever that is. Probably more. So these are going to be June 12th or 19th or 12th. Is it the 12th? I think so. So, um, you know, let's take probably a couple days just to get, you know, be able to separate your stuff out and get rid of the rest of it. So, um, would it be reasonable for the committee to give me something by the 3rd of June? Yeah. That gives me a week, a little bit more, to schedule things, count for weather, all that other fun stuff that goes along with Yeah. So if, if the committee could get back to me by that time frame, and then we could arrange to separate what you want, and then just take the rest of it out. Okay, so second, right? I have a motion second. and a second. Any further discussion? Thank you everyone for coming out. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Yeah, thanks, thanks everybody to talk about it. Next, discuss the ATV use for Silver Ridge Road. Hey, Bob, can I just make a suggestion? Folks, if you came here for the skate park and you're not interested in the ATV stuff and the rest of our agenda, if you'd like to leave, some folks sitting in there wondering when they should leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we have conversations in the hallway outside the door when the rest of the meeting is full of right. so we'll just take a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your service. I got a respect for what you do. Thank you. I like your ideas. I like where your thought process is. I understand it. I love, love to hear you construct.
He wants a big project. Yeah. It's true, he does. Club would like to use three tenths of a mile of Silver Ridge Road. Um, I guess uh, the town of Johnson allows ATVs on the town roads, and I guess the trails up there, and they would like to be able to uh, connect into the gas station um, and the sunset to probably use it to potentially use those facilities. So uh, at the last meeting, you know, they were here, um, and the select board um, asked that I contact or actually contacted the residents of that road to have them uh, come forward and bring some public input to the select board. Okay. Good comment about that. I was just wondering where it's entering on the Silver Ridge Road and if it's just for ATVs or for snow machines too, like in the wintertime. And uh, I understand that they're going to use the main part of the road. And I'm just um, concerned with the noise. I mean, them running by the front of your house like all day on Sunday or in the evenings or when you. I just. Um, I'm kind of opposed to them running around the houses. And I guess nobody else here came from that road today, so I guess I'm the only one, but maybe I'm the only one who's concerned, but I just think the noise is going to be something to consider. I can speak to the snow machine portion so we can put that one to rest. I'm a president of the Snow Road Snow Snow Riders, and we maintain the trails on the north side of Route 15. We will not, we already have an established trail that's been there for 40 years. It comes down through uh, Pinewood Estates. So, but I'll send a road in. Anyway. anyway, we haven't established where we would not be asking to come down that road to access Red the Pine Estates. Red Pine. Red Pine Estates. So, where did they enter onto the Silver Ridge Road? I mean, where are they coming from to use that road? The ATVs. The ATVs. Um, from what I know, there's a trail up there in the town. Is it Hyde Park? Hyde Park. Hyde Park. Hyde Park. So, there's a trail there, so I think they're just coming from that trail, as I remember. From the meeting. I don't know if we know exactly because that's on the Hyde Park side, mm -hmm. and Hyde Park already has granted permission, so it could be it's probably further up. Uh, yeah, I mean, somewhere. I was actually, there used to be an old crossing, not yeah. used to be an old. Well, uh, well, the, the town line because they're looking to use the in, the entire length of our portion of Silver Ridge Road. So the town line for the town of Morristown is in that curve just at the beginning of the curve. It's hard to explain. Yeah. I know exactly where it is because we had a problem with ambulance service to a house out there. It's actually where the black top begins. Yeah. Exactly. I, exactly. I, right. I live yeah. on the town yeah. line of right. Hyde yes. Park yes. yeah. My boundary line is pretty much is right there. So I was just concerned. Uh, I don't care about them running by my house all day Sunday or Saturday or whatever. I just, for the noise alone, I just think it's going to be well, all they're asking is for three tenths of a mile. So, whatever the filling station, three tenths is <coughs> the part that they're asking to use. Seven tenths. And it's what it's going to be is just to get gas and supplies. It's not. It's not like a trail that they're going to be running through to get to some other place. They're just going to go from there down to that one gas station. So I'm going to I'm going to put myself uh, in your shoes for just a moment. So concerns of noise are legitimate. Um, I'd, I'd like to see an experimental run of this happen, but I'd like to 
my position is to put some restrictions on time of day. Yeah. I don't think you're going to see a lot of traffic Monday to Friday. I think weekend use is probably where you're going to see the most. Yeah, it's not going to be at night. I don't, he, he didn't no, 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 no. no. I'm, but I'm saying if, if the board chooses to enter into some sort of a experimental agreement for a period of time, mm -hmm. we can set parameters on the mm -hmm. time of day usage. Right. And if we have violations, that repeated violations, we've got a watchdog right there. <laughs> uh, if we have repeated violations of that, if they can't abide by the rules we set forth, then we just take back the permissions. Yeah, because it's a yeah. it's a group that's getting the permission. It's not it's not like the whole town or something like this. It's a group of writers, right? Well, there's an ATV. It's like no there's a There is an ATV group, but I can tell you that there are a lot of folks not on the ATV group. Once they find out the road is open, they're going to use it. So. Right. It's a matter of, it, for me, it's all your life issues for the residents on the road. It also balances out with a local business that would see some income, some revenue generation, but it, it's the responsibility of the users of that stretch of road that's going to dictate whether or not it would work. We, we have one resident here, and I guess I'm proposing to you what an experimental period of time with some time frame parameters work as an experimental piece with that Yes, uh, for sure. And speed, speed and noise. Because I don't have anything against anybody. I'm just saying I prefer them not to be running by my house all day Saturday and Sunday when you're trying to relax or whatever. I mean, they're not very, they're loud and they disrupt. Would you assume that because Hyde Park has granted the use of Silver Ridge Road, that they'd be coming down Silver Ridge Road onto our part of Silver Ridge Road to get to the gas station. Would yes. that, would you That's what I wonder. I, I don't know what And so is. how would anyone who uses it know what the restrictions would be? They're, I believe they're posted, Mary. And posted? Yeah, they're, there's posted restricted hours. It's pretty common to have restricted hours uh, already. And uh, speed on, on the trail. Yes. And the speed is, uh, we can set that also. Um, I think most have been 35, but we can reduce that to well, I think it's a 25 mile per hour zone from the anyway, okay. So then. Is it 25? I'm, I thought it was 25. Well, so we have the ability to set the speed and time for that specific use. Um, yeah. Also, it does say it's a Green Mountain <coughs> veto. Yeah. And they could patrol it some themselves because, again, if this doesn't work, they're not going to get to go. So if people are doing things that shouldn't speed in, tearing up people's property, we can stop at any time. And yeah, we can we can revoke it pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was just, just curious. Yeah. I was just, those were my, my main concerns, because like I say, I just... They're valid. Yeah, they're, they're valid. They're concerns. very noisy, like I said, I don't have anything against anybody that runs, has them, or enjoys them, but it's just like, right. um, yeah. you know, it's just one of those concerns. A lot of the towns right now, they yeah, we're away from us. I have them where they ride up and down the road yeah. on the secondary roads. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. And at the point to get to Max Market, mm -hmm. they they close at nine or ten. Or they're going to go to the, sit, the Sitco. I don't think it's going to be that late. It's going to be uh, Sitco and um, I don't think it's Sitco yeah, and then Sunset. No, it's not. Those are the two places. Right? No, it's going to be Max. It's not going to go down to. You think it's going to no, Max? Max. Max. Not Maplefield, no. Max. Max. I know it was a Sitco station. Was it a Sitco? Max. Yeah, yeah. Max. 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 Okay, right there on the corner. Yeah. 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 Hmm. But I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I, I, I know where you live, right across from Bill Allen's there. And I, Pretty much. I feel the same way. You know, it's just like they run right. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, they are running by. Oh, they, they run in packs, and it's just, it's. Yeah. I don't know. It's just going to be. Disruptive. It could be. I'm, I'm certainly willing to do something probational. You know, I have I have a side by side also, and I have a camp out in uh, in Danville, but I had this constant traffic by mine all the time too. And you know, I've got a side by side, and it still drives me crazy. Right. So I get it. Um, but I certainly I like the idea what Eric's saying and Chris is saying that you know we can try it and uh, set some parameters. You know, I think speed, and you, you know, you may still have some people that are irresponsible, as you always do. Well, yeah. But um, we can leave that to the clubs to enforce and um, try and see what happens. Okay. Okay. 
and certainly stay in touch with you. Yeah. you know. Certainly looking for your feedback, man. Don't hold back. Your quality of life as one person is just as important as 180 years well, getting to a gas station. Guys, that's what they gas. It's your house. Sir. But it's, it's my your house. Home. I have to pay taxes. Yes, ma'am. You know, it's just like, uh, why should I be um, come up on to with all that noise when they're just riding by having a great time and they're, you know, I just don't know. It was just the noise that really right. uh, concerning me. And, um, but I'm willing to have a trial run. And if it doesn't work out, then I probably, obviously, will be the only one that's. Flaps my gums. <laughs> Maybe not. She, Maybe yeah. Yeah. You're the only one who has to have to be here tonight. There, be, there was we a did, letter from we someone. Did, we did get a letter from someone yeah. in, the, in the neighborhood. I, I got a phone call. Can I pass the phone to Yeah. So that was my only That's, you know, just curious. Who is our local representative for that ATV club to announce? Is it Alan, Alan Frederick? Shannon. Yeah. Shannon. 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 Yeah. Okay. Shannon. Now, Alan sent me a message. Oh, Alan's his wife. Yeah. Wife. yeah. yeah. Would the I think the would the hours of like eight a.m. to six p.m. be reasonable hours? Well, that's all day. That's all day long. That's taking up a lot of your weekend. If it's Saturday and Sunday that they mostly travel, I mean from eight to six. My God, you're talking twelve hours. Yeah, twelve hours. No, ten. Ten, ten hours. I think. Excuse me. But I mean that'd be a lot to put up with. On occasion, I can see, but I mean, like, I don't know, it would be a lot to put up with. I yeah, I'm not sure we're going to see a lot of volume. I don't think you're going to see a lot of volume, to be honest, but like I said, those are the hours that I would personally propose, given um, uh, as a trial, uh, and they would be a 25, I'm thinking 25 mile speed limit. Uh, we can always modify those uh, or revoke at any given time. Um, you know, I do think there will be some people that don't follow the rules, oh, um, but I think you have valid concerns. I was a little uh, unsure about this myself, and we also have a side by side. Um, He's got a snowmobile trailer in his backyard too. To go by. <laughs> literally, actually, from you know, it's literally right by my window. <laughs> Um, I wave at him as I go. <laughs> I, I rub my edge over the way. I I have never had a problem with those guys, um, and I, you know, they do come. They don't have the hours restrictions. So, um, but well, the one good thing, even if it's all day, it gives you a chance to find out maybe it won't bother you come all day. I mean, he could go by on his motorcycle and make more noise than they do. Well, this is true. <laughs> right. So I'll be on the horn all day saying, "Look, well, and I, right. that's not my person because I was just concerned because I was just concerned. That's all." But if you, I've been if doing you this for 45, 47 years, and it's been it's yeah. a fairly quiet neighborhood. I mean, yes, yeah. you have traffic, yeah. but to, to allow, I don't know. It's just like, wow. <laughs> I was just concerned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, your neighbor up on the hill was thinking about coming tonight. He, uh, I'm surprised they they weren't here. Yeah. I'm surprised that there wasn't a, a few more people that live on that road that wasn't yeah. here. I was shocked. But. I'm surprised too, because I really felt that we strongly needed to get feedback, and I'm yeah. surprised we weren't kind of flooded. Well, me too, when I looked around, I thought, I'm the only one here. <laughs> and I debated about coming myself, because this is not my thing. <laughs> but, right, but it's good you did. Because, uh, it's important, I think, uh, trying and see what happens. You know, it may only be maybe, you know, three or four wheelers a day, you know, or something like that. Well, true. I mean, but when you, I mean, most, if you have a club, they yeah, usually yeah, have usually a good. club. Could be a lot of them. You more. know, could be a lot of them. Could be. So, I don't know. So those were just my concerns. Yeah, understood. I'd make a motion to uh, approve a conditional use of Silver Ridge Road. Uh, for ATV use uh, Monday through well, every day of the week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, with a restriction of 25 miles per hour uh, on a temporary basis for 2019. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Would you just restrict that to the Green Mountain ATV Club? They have to be a use of that. They have to be registered. The machine has to be registered to be part of the club. And uh, I 
forget the other one. Yeah, so it's probably a good point, Marianne. So club access. Club access. Yeah. yeah. VASA. VASA. Yeah. There's the there's the green one right Yeah, but it's actually through VASA, so Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Thank you again. Thank you Thank you again. Don't hesitate to yeah. Well, Let us know. I, I don't like to stir. I don't, I'm not, I, this is my thing. I'm not a public speaker and right. I'm just. We're not We do want to know though if it's a nuisance. <laughs> right. You're doing very well. Dan, well. any time. <laughs> Dan loves to get those phone calls. You can call him many times. <laughs> oh, I talked to him this morning. Yeah. <laughs> you got his number then. I do. <laughs> don't, don't hesitate to use it. Uh, next, uh, new business. Do you want to do the uh, mowing proposal first, Dan? I'm sorry? The mowing proposal. Sure. Um, we have been out soliciting for people to mow the cemeteries. And as everybody knows right now, I don't have anybody to mow the cemeteries. Um, and this was the one proposal I got you know, today. In fact, this is the only proposal that I've received. This is every other week. Uh, I know the preferred is um, every week, but I, I couldn't find anybody that really wanted to do it. So this is the only one that I've you know, got. It's within our budget. So this is this is they're just mowing every other week. Yes. What do you guesstimate that will? Be. Would we come up with the, uh, it's a little over ten thousand dollars? It's about uh, it's about eleven hundred dollars um, under the budget that we have. So it works. Yeah. The budget. Will we get it done before Memorial Day? Um, I'll update that in uh, my in my notes. Yep. I make a motion. Ready for motion? Yes. Make a motion. We accept Apex Services. Services for um, mowing the cemeteries once every other week. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Next. Oh, volunteers, we took that off, right? That was negated. So, medical office zoning. Here we go. I know you gentlemen are here. Todd, you want to talk about it? Um, not my agenda item. Maybe Chris wants to start? <laughs> sure, I can start. So I was uh, approached uh, by several folks as there was a concern over the current zoning restrictions that would, that only allow, rather I should say, um, uh, healthcare facilities in the downtown and then uh, the hospital uh, zoning area. There is a current group of providers that are looking to set up uh, a medical office in, uh, on Professional Drive. The current the zoning restricts them from going in there. Uh, this was brought to my attention for a couple of the reasons. One, sitting on the select board. One, I work in healthcare. Um, the, my primary concern is that there's three physicians uh, that are set to leave um, Community Health Services in Lomoyle Valley. Um, they are looking to establish a practice on Professional Drive. Maintaining physicians in this community is of vital importance. If we lose those physicians to another town out here or anywhere else um, <coughs> would be detrimental um, to the health of this community. So I'm really concerned that we have uh, physicians here. It may sound like, okay, we can just bring them back. I've been looking for personally to hire a physician for about two years now. Um, you cannot find them. And they could be hired tomorrow with, they could get 20 offers tomorrow anywhere. Uh, and, really the state, but in the country, the death hundreds. Um, so I think what we, whatever we can do, and I'm not sure what that looks like at this point. I know there's a lot of, I've been on the phone a lot um, <laughs> since mid last week. There's a lot of different options and ways to approach this. So I think what I'm looking for is a discussion, but my primary concern 
is maintaining primary care and medical access uh, for this community. Um, if I could suggest the, uh, we actually didn't initially apply for a permit because we assumed that it was okay in that area, in that there's now uh, dentistry, uh, psychological, uh, eye doctors, there's, you could find many, many that are already in place. Some of them have been there. In fact, we rent space to the, uh, the state health group. None of these people, uh, the, the people we're hoping to rent to, uh, it would be strictly an office that they could do tetanus shots or flu shots or something like that, but strictly an office space. So, so initially, we didn't even ask for a permit because we just assumed all the neighbors were part of it. And uh, so, so here we are finding that, that uh, in fact, maybe there's something in place. The, the, the tenants that we had in this place uh, moved to a different one. They were doing health care, I think. It would be considered health care. Uh, they went through Act 250, the local zoning and all of that, and uh, so um, I, I'm not sure where the other line. So, so again, we hate to, th these doctors could, could have, the, they, they already are, are investigating something in Johnson or further away. So I, I think uh, to take this even deeper, the, <coughs> the uh, Copley Hospital could well be um, on the edge of uh, financial, if, if there's more and more doctors headed off somewhere. It, it, it isn't just three doctors, it, it's, it's much deeper than that. It could be. So, uh, so I can talk to that too um, a bit, Sonny. Uh, I know some of the initial zoning was done in consideration of uh, preservation of Copley. Um, I have had an opportunity to speak to uh, members of their board as well as their COO who did send Dan and myself, uh, I think it's in our packet, uh, a letter of support uh, for this group uh, because there was some of that initial concern and why the zoning was the way it was that was actually brought up by Copley Hospital. So um, I did go back directly to Copley um, to uh, get their feedback uh, and they are in support of again they're not, we're not haven't talked to specifics about what that might look like but um, they're in support of whatever we can do and I think we'd look for can, maybe I can help with a little bit of background yeah. and Todd please correct me if I get any of this wrong probably eight years ago Todd something like that maybe something like that sure. somewhere yeah. you know, um, Todd had actually proposed to, to allow medical uses on, on the north end of town Downtown oh. and North End. What's that? Downtown and North End. Downtown so. and North End. Because it was originally allowed when I got here, only allowed up on the hill in the hospital zone. Right. So, um, so at that point in time, it had been rev it was in front of the, the Planning Commission. Copley specifically um, came to the Planning Commission and argued against it because of their fear, I think more so for urgent care or some other things that could come in and, and literally take the, some of the customer base away from what they need to, to survive. Um, since that time, other, I don't think you can really turn a blind eye and say that there have been other treatment facilities that have opened up on the north end of town. It's obvious there's a dental clinic up there that wasn't there before. It has been approved by the DRB as other office use during that time frame, and, and quite honestly, nobody ever appealed that. But I, I think the longer range plan is, is should the DRB be doing that? I can't answer that. They make the decisions. But this is clearly a treatment facility, and I don't think you can just go and put on blinders. Luckily, right now, the zoning by law has already been warned for some changes, and that section is, is listed as a change. It's getting voted tomorrow. So, you know, it, it is in there, and it, it, it can be fixed. You know, I don't think, I don't know that that solves the short term that these people want to move into that. Um, you know, you could do it. Uh, I know it's in front of the DRB right now. You know, I think it really the question is, is once again, I think back to the select board, and is this something the select board really ultimately you you as the legislative body decide what's in that zoning bylaw? 
So I think it's important that I think Todd is the director of planning. Um, I, I think, you know, direction to Todd would be appropriate to solve this. And of course, he's working with the, the planning council to do that. Ultimately, you guys are going to be the ones that, that decide what goes in that zoning bylaw when it comes to you. It is open, it is warm, so it's really, really a short time frame to do that, but it does come back to the board, the select board for final approval on that. Since that's open, it does make it convenient with everything being warmed right now. So if that's the select board's desire, I'm trying to say this as neutrally as I can, then I think it would give an applicant um, to have a medical facility or treatment facility and that thing some level of comfort that they could move forward. Did I say that correctly? Pretty well done. Okay. Does that make sense? Is this, uh, and this is strictly a pediatrician setting up a family practice. This is not an urgent care. This isn't no. people flying in to get okay. So this is, I am in favor of sending the message to the DRB that we would like to see that change so that we would allow that usage to happen. The plan I have a, what's that? The planning council. Not planning council. So I, I have a concern about access because my understanding is these three doctors represent 7,000 patients. Is that the correct number? Yes. yes. That is a huge amount of traffic coming in and out of professional drive without a regulated light there. I think we're opening, uh, I think it's a great idea. I don't lose our docs. I just want to make sure we're uh, providing uh, that's a state highway. So we would have to have state involvement or even a light put in there, but it's close to Northgate Plaza. You know, I'm just throwing that out. I don't get into go down that rabbit hole so too far. I can speak quite a bit to that because I run uh, one of my practices is actually going to be significantly larger than that. Um, and while that sounds like a lot, you don't. So 7,000 is your total active patients that you may see. Some come in once every three years. Sure. Um, so the volume, uh, I understand your concern, but um, my hardwick office is quite a bit bigger than that, and it, I, it's, I don't think it'll be an issue. Eric, I would expect the DRB just to require sidewalk improvements. I wouldn't expect a light or anything like that, traffic oriented. Okay. I think we'd be hard pressed to have. The, that's a whole. <coughs> process, oh, process. I, I know. I that's that's why you brought it up. That's what I'm just saying. Is if. If this goes in there and we begin to see the police department responding to multiple accidents because of line of sight issues, I mean, I'm just, yeah. I'm just throwing it out there. So I'm not against the idea. I think it's, I think. It's, well, I we, yeah, it we can we can monitor that. Yeah, we will. If if that starts to happen, then we would have some data, yeah. and that would actually be if we did want to put a traffic light in, that kind of data would help us do that later on. Yeah. My, my comment was, I remember when, um, <clears throat> when this all came about, when the, the current president of Copley really wanted to have everything under the campus right there, Mel Potashnik was, you know, because of a lot of things, the, the um, you know, the fact that other urgent care facilities could move in, competition, but he wanted to have everything right there. I remember him talking about it, and that's why we kind of did what we did, but I remember thinking, you know, this place is growing. And we already have how many ducks that walk like ducks and act like ducks? You know, we're not calling them ducks, but they're ducks, you know, all over town. I certainly don't have a problem with, with uh, having, it, having it set up that way, having the DRB see if we can instruct a planning board to make an exception until the zoning can be changed. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we have the power to do that. And uh, because I think that's an ideal spot over there. I know some of the other offices that are right there, and you know, it's ideal. In fact, I've had people all day long call me and tell me, you know, they wanted they should come to the meeting tonight because that'd be a great place to have their doctor's appointment, you know. So the word's kind of out everywhere, and um, you know, I certainly don't have a problem personally with having, having an office there. So, you know, my, my take on it. I don't have a problem with it. I was curious about um, does it open us up? To, for discrimination if, let's say, the dock in the box plan wants to come into the town and we say no. Do, do we have a problem with that or not? Because I'm thinking about... It meets the zoning. It meets the zoning. You're going to say yes. yes. So, that is the, so that is the exact risk I discussed with, with Copley. Okay. So if the zoning changes, it's way easier. Yeah. Right. It's way easier. And the reality is there's more space. On that side of town, Larger and it's going to be less expensive. <laughs> More so, areas to develop. All that. 
So that is the risk that was discussed with Copley senior leadership. Yeah. Acutely aware. Okay. I would just point out from the EMS side, um, one of the things about being a data geek is like remember reading stuff. Um, 2014, 2015, there was a study, uh, I believe it was out west, that uh, looked at loss of primary care physicians and the impact on EMS and emergency departments. Uh, the loss of, uh, in this study, the loss of one primary care physician in this, in this one particular community was a 40% increase in the ER visits. Um, and uh, the, you know, the emergency department becomes, is the front door of any hospital. Um, and then that impacts us um, either through uh, people calling to, to do that because they no longer have a primary care physician right. or we become the de facto health care for that person. Um, through through nine one one, that impacts point. us all because yes, the no, ED sure. is the most expensive place to receive care, um, and it also is uh, bad for continuity. So your your care you're getting, you're, of course, you're getting good acute care, but that's not that's not the services that they're providing. More prevention based. So do we need to make a motion at all, or we need to just uh, talk to the planning board? I, I think. Um, a motion would be appropriate to uh, Todd help me out if I get the wording to direct the planning director, the director of planning, and the planning council um, to put appropriate language into the zoning bylaws to allow medical use on the healthcare facility use in the health zone in the north. Yes. Yeah. And in the interim, do we need anything for the interim to let that change? Realistically, I don't think you can do anything in the interim other than if Todd decides to issue a notice of violation to something that opens there, that the board, ultimately the board would come back to the board whether to enforce that or not. Is that correct, Todd? That's correct. Alternately, I mean, the other track is I've got this warrant for a DRB hearing on June 12th as a business professional office use. So that is how the DRB permanent other kind of lighter medical uses up there, a change of use does require a permit. You always need a permit, you should always check. But all those other uses have been permitted. So the DRB may permit this on June 12th under a different use, even though, we'll see. So did Sonny apply for that permit and uh, they get it? They already have. Yeah. Yes, yeah. They, and they, 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 and they could get that problem. permit. Yeah. At least it'll solve the problem of the, the dock quacking like a dock. Right, that's my point. So, so with have... Dan's wording, so moved. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> no, I hope I can remember that. <laughs> I hope you are for another <laughs> Do we have any further discussion? So one thing you could do just to speed the process up is, let's say the DRB doesn't permit this, which is a possibility. Uh, I know there are comments that the, the medical should stay on the hill. I heard that from a board member the other day trying to explain what this, what the, why this right. was coming up like that. Um, your DR, your Voting, zoning gets voted tomorrow night by planning. It goes to the select board on June, what is it? June 17th? You can, so that's your public hearing. You can vote on the zoning at your next regular meeting. It, your next, it's what you schedule. You can schedule a meeting. Often towns will schedule a meeting the next day and vote the zoning. Mm -hmm. Or, so if you don't want to wait, the, if you want to speed up their construction schedule by two weeks, you can meet earlier and just have a meeting to vote the zoning. Actually, we do have a meeting on the 19th because we're doing the road acceptance meeting, we can do it there. Okay. We have to do it sooner. I'm out of town on the 17th also. Oh. We, we pushed it back because you guys were out of town on the 3rd. Yeah. I think Judy was out of town on the 3rd. The 19th is pushing it later than the 17th. Yeah, but he has to have, we have to have the hearing. hearing. We have to have oh. the hearing first. I want to push the hearing back based on your scheduling. So I'd like to just, you can push the vote up, I'm saying. You can kind of make up for that. We, could, we could do the vote at the, on the 19th. And the trustees are hearing on the 19th as well. That's their regular hearing. Are you here on the 19th, Bob? No, I'm not. I'm in Poland. <laughs> How about video? <laughs> I could it's call. Like, I could call. I'm afraid to jump. Late. <laughs> just a tad. Yeah. Well, we, we have the hearing scheduled. We can work out a way to get the, the vote. It's not going to be well. It would because it's in the town, so we don't necessarily need the village approval on that. Correct. Right. It's in the town. Yeah. 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 If you need me, I can call in. Okay. Well, we know Bob's in town. I'll be seven hours ahead. But it's four hours. It's like 12.30. I'm also wake down. I call. <laughs> okay. So, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you.
Thank you. Thanks for your time. Tom. Next, accept the resignation of Tom Herchak on the MDM. Make the motion and accept the letter of resignation. Second. Any further discussion? I did thank him for his service and everything. Be nice to maybe have a card. Yeah, we had to send him a card. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. Approve and sign contract for the auditor. I, we haven't got on the list and just, it doesn't have to be anything to make a motion on it. But I know Mary Ann has an application in to. Yes. To, you want to do that at the same time? I understand that the board will appoint somebody to fill the vacancy. And um, so I have submitted an application. I wasn't sure when we were going to deal with that. Can we do that now? Um, do we have to warn it? It should be warned. And, and, and quite honestly, in other board set that we've done, the, the standard practice is to at least have the MDR, the board with the DRB or planning council or whatever meet with somebody that wants to be on it. Yeah. So um, I think that would be, I don't want to change practice. I don't want to put you off, but I think no, that's that, fine. And, um, and do you have to advertise it or warn it? That's up to the select board. Yeah, I think so. All right, so I'll put something out. We've accepted the resignation, so we'll put something out that there's an open slot mm -hmm. on the MDF. And then usually what happens is that board makes a recommendation back to the select board. Yes, we do. We have it done on that board. I'm on that board also. So I've been trying to get something together, so. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Yeah, okay. Do you want me to resubmit my application, or do you have it? You have no, you don't. I have. I've said it to both of those. So on the next to. MDF board, I'll let you know, and then you can meet with the board then. Okay. Next, approve and sign contract for the auditor. Tina, you want to discuss this one for me? It's just standard language where she just wants to tell everybody she's starting in again. And yep. we all have to sign agreeing to this. And there's a time frame that she did put in there, but this time she intends to have the actual audit done and in writing to us in November, which is a lot sooner than it happened last year, because last year was the first year. So November would be a good time to have it all done. So that works out a lot better. Okay. How does the fee compare to last time? We have a three-year contract with her, and this is the second year, okay. so it's... Okay. It's Actually, it goes down, right? She goes yes, down. it goes down as the years she gets go. used to it. <laughs> okay, do we hear a motion? Make a motion to approve it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Go back. <clears throat> Next, review conflict of interest policy. This is something that um, was passed into law. Um, by the legislature last year that in the last step. We do have a conflict of interest policy right now. So what I want to do is give the board the opportunity to review this. The one that we have now doesn't include some of the statutory stuff um, that the new law says that we have to have in it. So it is quite a bit different than the one we have now. Um, and once again, this is the, the whole state legislature, everybody, so every town and state now has to have a policy I uh, used the DLCP model policy and, and switch up some of the language a little bit so that it meets all the statutory requirements or it close to the statutory requirements as possible. So what I'd like to put the board to do is to review this. I want to put it back on the next agenda um, for approval. Um, that way you have time to make some comments on it if you want to. Yeah. Um, or ask any questions. I know it's a lot for it to, to get into one night, but I, it's, it's supposed to be in place by 1 July. So we, this one came out as a result of the government and his yes. construction business. Yes, it, it is. Thanks. As a matter of fact, it is. Yeah. And I think if you don't pass one, then you are given the DLCT one. And the training I went to last week. Yeah. But I don't think, you know, it's, it, this is the DLCT one. I don't know if they can oppose it or not, but you, you have to have one. So, you know, it's a start on that. Um, so if you have any comments or whatever, just let me know. Or, We'll put it back on the next agenda for, for approval for any further discussion. Okay. All right. We'll look at that. Is this going to be the next meeting? Yes. 
Yeah, I didn't want to ask you to prove without having the opportunity to, to, right. to, 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 look, at it. to, to look at it and, and think about what, what's in it. Okay, so that will be on the third. Yes. Okay. Next, A1 ambulance repair cost. Bill, you want to bring that up? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, so, uh, ambulance A1, I, I'm hoping you received a packet ahead of time. Uh, that I had submitted to Dan about that truck. So that uh, that truck is a 2008 truck uh, that uh, currently has uh, 42,000 miles on it and about uh, 4,500 engine hours, uh, which is the equivalent of about 268,000 miles on the um, We sent it in April uh, down to uh, Stowe Road Auto uh, for some routine maintenance. Uh, they found multiple areas of corrosion. Uh, I asked them to bring a uh, body uh, guy in to take a look at it, and that estimate from uh, uh, from the body people is included in your packet. Um, so um, there's uh, that truck is due for inspection in August, uh, and there is some question uh, between the guys at Stone Road Auto and the body people about as it currently uh, currently exists, it may not pass inspection in August. Uh, so I thought it would be essentially managerial malfeasance for me not to bring this to your attention now and get some direction from you of how you want to go with this. Um, so there's some options that are available. There are some pictures in your, in your packet there uh, that are not all inclusive of uh, what we're seeing on the, on the vehicle. Uh, and certainly those are not pictures from up underneath where there's also uh, quite a bit of corrosion. Uh, that's not the only issue with that truck. We have continuing issues with the air ride suspension uh, in the back of that truck also. Uh, that has required Stowe Road Auto to either come up and fix it or for us get it down there. Uh, that vehicle, uh, looking back over the last two fiscal years, has uh, already incurred about $10,000 worth of repairs. Um, plus, we've got it slated for the installation of about $20,000 in new power load stretcher uh, with the new budget year, which, frankly, I'm hesitant to put in this truck based on the condition of the truck. Uh, so uh, there are some options that I outlined in the packet. One would be to, uh, to have it repaired, uh, and their, their estimate was that would give us another two years out of, uh, out of the vehicle. Um, there are some concerns that they'll never get rid of all the corrosion in the patient care box, uh, but uh, it would give us at least probably another two years to make uh, better and, uh, and more informed decisions uh, about uh, replacing that truck. There are also uh, there are some other options also, which include uh, looking at a used ambulance with uh, comparable mileage uh, that would cost us anywhere in the thirty to fifty thousand dollar range through a uh, used ambulance or used fire apparatus dealership. Uh, the other options would be uh, either a lease option or a direct purchase on a new ambulance <coughs> to replace it outright. Uh, there are some distinct advantages, I think, to that as an agency into the town. Uh, one that, uh, when paired with our new truck. Um, it would give us two, uh, a fleet of two new trucks, and I would anticipate greatly reduced maintenance costs over the next three to five years having a new fleet. Uh, it would give us uh, two standardized trucks, so the equipment is in the same place on each truck. So every provider, when they get in either truck, the same equipment is in the same place every time, because uh, we would have the ability to twin it to the current new truck, A2. Um, so, uh, when I checked with our vendor on A2, which is Northeastern Rescue Vehicles, uh, they don't lease vehicles directly. Uh, they did put us uh, in touch with a lease uh, option uh, company um, that uh, uh, looking at what they've got uh, coming out, they've got three trucks available in July uh, that are twins to our current <coughs> truck A2, uh, which are 176,000. Uh, adding the power load cot, which is already budgeted for uh, is going to bring that up into the 210, 220 range. Uh, and that also includes painting uh, to, to match the current truck. Uh, their their uh, suggestion is not to paint it, but to wrap it. And uh, they would be able to wrap it in-house. And that would be uh, uh, what they tell me is a savings over painting the truck outright. Uh, the other option is uh, that Bob Gleason, our, our, our sales guy from the vendor, uh, called last week to say that they have a, a demo truck from Demers, which is the parent company of Braun, which built A2. Uh, and uh, he has a demo truck that he's expecting back in. I don't know the mileage on it, but that truck would also be in the $170,000, $180,000 range uh, and would be available almost immediately to us. 
again getting wrapped and having the, the state required power power cut put into it. Uh, so those those are the options uh, as as we see them on our end, uh, uh, me and Corey, and that I've passed on to Dan. And what I'm really looking for here is some direction of how uh, you guys think we should best proceed on that. One of my biggest questions is how many call how many times do you guys go use that second ambulance? You know, that, that's. That, that, that's a valid point. We're currently at about 700 calls a year, which is about the break point for having a two-truck fleet. Right. Uh, I can tell you from previous experience at the other agency was that they were a three-truck fleet, and I was desperately trying to get them down to a two-truck two fleet right. uh, because they didn't have the call volume to support three trucks, and they certainly didn't have the staffing to support three mm -hmm. trucks. Uh, we know from the National Volunteer Fire Council that a truck sitting static in an ambulance bay is about $61,000 a year. Oh, just for that truck to sit there uh, by the time we do maintenance and fuel, insurance, equipment, contracts, staffing, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other side of that is um, when you need a second truck, by God, you need the second truck. Right. Whether, I, whether we need the second truck for a larger call here in town uh, or whether we need it uh, to, uh, to become the primary truck for the other truck going out for maintenance or routine stuff. So I would, I would strongly, I, I understand what you're saying, yeah. uh, and we can certainly make a case for that, but I would strongly recommend staying as a, as a two-truck service. See, I, as, as you know, I've had a long history. Yes, sir. On, uh, since 84, since it was only a one ambulance, you know, for a long, long time. Probably the first 15 or 20 years I was on was one ambulance, till we got to 90, till we got to 2008. Yeah. You know, I hated 2008. I never wanted to buy it. And it's had it's had problems with that air suspension since day one. Yes, sir. And um, you know, we, I know it really well. And I just always thought, and I still think that the number of times you need two crews, a lot of times you don't have enough for two crews, two people. You know, two two actual crews that can get in that same second ambulance and go. We've had many times where. We have to call mutual aid anyway. We have to call Stowe, you know, and we have to call NEMS or whoever, and uh, they always come, you know. And I know, uh, I see your side of it too. I, you know, I, I would tell you just just anecdotally uh, that since I started here in February, uh, we've had quarter two or three, two at least twice that we've been able to uh, get the second truck on the road to support the primary truck on a call. Mm -hmm. So we do we. With the increase in our roster, uh, we've we've seen better response. That's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Over the last six months, we've also had an increase due to some of the changes in NEMS taking mm -hmm. all the transports. We actually have been covering eight to twelve mutual aid calls out of our area mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. And that changes. And, and by the end of the month, we're covering mutual aid and we've been able to cover our own calls. So that's just for people jumping on that second truck. I, so I as, will, oh, good. as the times sure. change, these other services are as busy and they're gone. And with us being fully staffed, we're the ones covering their mutual aid, mm -hmm. which in the past, I mean, I've been here four years and that wasn't the case for the first two years. Right. But in the last two years, we're covering more mutual aid calls than we ever have. I, I don't pretend to know historically what was here before I got here, but it would appear the tides have turned. Yeah. And mutual, when you do mutual aid, it's an income for the town? Yes, ma'am. Um, versus uh, a paramedic intercept, which we, because I'm around during the day, we're seeing more requests for intercept. Uh, uh, for We supported Hardwick on Saturday and actually had a resuscitation on a cardiac arrest in the field. Um, that, uh, you know, we're, we're getting, we're seeing some more of those now. Now that we, uh, they know that we have more consistent paramedic coverage. Just so you know the background with those ambulances. The one that sits is the one that rots away. Yes. You know, and that's what happens. That's why you want right. it is the way it is right now. Right. You know, and, and unfortunately, I went down and met with Todd at Storogato, and I, I don't even think that's fixable. And, and you know, talking face to face to him, it's, it's right. pretty much gone. Yeah. You know, it's not worth putting money into. Do you know how much it would be annually to lease one? Um, the numbers that I ran here today, is, is the team, is it good? Yeah, um, I'm just curious. Yeah, um, if, we, um, if we did the high end, $225,000, a uh, $225,000 vehicle, at 72 months through affordable funding and leasing, which is 
the company in the Northeast who works with, uh, that would work out somewhere between $35 and $4,300 a month uh, for 72 months. 40 a year. I'm sorry? 40 a year. Uh, yes, sir, about that. Yeah, so you're, you're looking at a five year lease, four year lease? Yeah, that was, well, that's 72 months. That's five, yeah, five years. Yeah. Um, so, what I'm really looking for is I'm not asking for any decisions. I'm just looking for direction whether you want me to further explore, get hard numbers for lease options, uh, or hard numbers for direct purchase, or let's, let's fix it and let's get a couple of years out of it. I've, I've got no dog in this fight except making sure my people are in a safe vehicle. Uh, which Understood. is a which which is another another issue with that truck. The technology in that truck, from a patient from a from a crew safety standpoint, is 11 years old. Right. How is A2? You like A2? Uh, A2 is a great truck. I, I like to take a ride in it sometime. I'm sure. You know. It's got that liquid. Not the back. Walk well, across the street. <laughs> no, not the back. Hey, you know when we learned to be drivers, the first thing they did is they put you in the back, strapped to a backboard, so you knew what it felt like oh. riding around the back. Yeah. So. Uh, that truck's got the liquid spring suspension, which yeah. is really what the uh, uh, what the state of the science is uh, for us. Mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, if you're not familiar with the liquid spring, it's essentially computer controlled, yeah. and it, it's mineral oil that that goes throughout the back to even things out. Um, cool. Yeah, uh, it's it's a lot more dependable, I think, than uh, mm -hmm. than the airbag suspension. Yeah. Well, A2, did we pay outright for that? Was that a, was we that paid, a, that's we a lot. $93,000 we paid for A2, it. A2, the, the current, your, the, the A2, current the brand new, new one. one. The brand new one. The brand new one. We just bought that. Yeah, we just bought that with this current fiscal year's budget. No, we borrowed over five years? Yeah, something like that. We it was less than the 250 that what we had yeah. put on the, uh, it was less than we, that. We borrowed over five years for that, so, which takes over approval. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, I am just going to throw this out there for discussion. I don't see any of those options being like fixing it. Sounds like this this truck we're we're putting a band-aid on. I don't know. Go talk to Todd. Board. Yeah, go down and talk to Todd. I it, we're already we have our budget set for the upcoming year. I'm not sure we can squeeze that kind of money out of that budget for a brand new ambulance that we haven't budget. We didn't budget for an ambulance purchase this next year, did we? No. no, 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 we did not. No. But again, I and and I, I totally appreciate and understand what you're saying. But I also just can't let this sit and then make. Oh, it I understand. Well, I'm and saying that the fourth option here is that right. we get rid of that truck and go to a one truck unit until we go to budget building next November and for the following fiscal year, we mm -hmm. go to the taxpayers to buy a brand new animal. But I'm just concerned that. We'd have to go for a special meeting, right? It's about time we'd have to vote yeah. on that. And would I you have to do that for leasing also? No. You don't have to do it for leasing, but That's, I would not feel comfortable. I would not. We're coming in underneath the, the, the this kind of going back door on the taxpayers. Um, so I'm throwing that out there for this guy. And, and I've already had a lot of taxpayers talk to me about this. Hmm. You know, it wasn't only my opinion. You have my opinion anyway. Yeah. But I've had a lot of people talk to me about it that uh, are aware of the situation of the ambulance soon. So, what, what do you think, Sean? Um, I think that going down to a one ambulance building is would be detrimental to this town. We run second medical calls with them, and I can tell you as much as they're in other towns, because Stowe can't cover their own, and NEMS is God only knows where. Like, they go to Eden, I hear it, we hear it all the time, and my guys get aware of it. So, to go to one, one ambulance, and you're, you might expect your next ambulance out of what? East Montpelier or Waterbury? Mm -hmm. That's not good for the people of this town. Mm -hmm. and, and it's getting busier. I mean, we see it in the fire side, and definitely in the ambulance side with helping them. We see it all the time, but it's just getting busier. And these other services have one ambulance, and Stone will transport to UVM, so all of a sudden Morristown's their next line of defense. Still has one ambulance. They have, uh, they have two, but they don't cover both, and rarely can they get a second crew. Stowe Sto 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 has two ambulances. Yeah. Uh, NEMS has three ambulances. They staff two. Hardwick has Corey Hardwick has two, two, and they staff one. They staff. Yeah. And they can And listening to them yesterday for all their calls, they could get one on the road and had eight calls. Hardwick did. So. Yes. What about if we came up with the money to fix this body work this time, and then this coming budget? we look again at whether it would make more sense to lease one or put it on the um, 
put it on the ballot for the people to vote or whatever because we're going to have to make a decision before next i mean before next year the repair option was a little over five thousand well, even How just me, just can I throw something out? Just so, if you're looking to put something on the the town meetings for approval next March, you really you're still the build out. You're still two years out from now before you probably accept it anymore. So, so by the time you do that, even, unless there happens to be something, right? Unless they had something something coming out. So, I mean, realistically, you know, I think the last time was what eight months for delivery, something like that. Eight to ten. Yeah. Yeah. So you're. You're realistically, you're, you're looking, you know, if you're going to the voters for voter approval, which I would recommend to, um, you know, so to, to borrow the money over five years or something like that, just like we just purchased the last one, you're realistically two years out from now, 18 months, something like that, from right now before you accept delivery, unless you get lucky and there's something there. I'm just you know, putting that time frame out there and you were part of the discussion. And I'm not trying to be up on Bill. Bill just came to us and, and thank you very much for doing so. Yeah. You too, Corey. This thing did not creep up on us. No. This thing has I, I, always been a problem for a long time. It's always been a problem. Right. Primary. Why, I mean, this is, I, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm yeah. concerned that this wasn't brought to us before and I'm kind of built up. But I'm just saying, I haven't, we have, Multiple ambulances around us without enough crew to sit in on them. I understand that. I, I get that. I, I'm, I'm having a really hard time with any of those options. Putting money into a, in a broken truck just to limp it by. I, I'm, I'm thinking about our crew safety. I'm thinking about how, whether we can even get it to a scene before it breaks again. I mean, we're talking about body work, but there's air ride suspension problems that I don't know what that is. There's frame is. issues too. So I, I'm concerned about spending money on the animals to fix it. I'm concerned about all of a sudden one of the taxpayers, but that may be our only option is to go to them with a special vote. Well, the only, the, only, the only good thing that you do have to come, Sarah's going to hate me. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's because you do have elections coming. We have a primary. If you can get it on a vote, we have two votes in the next two weeks. Can you put it on the school one on Tuesday and we have a school no. one next week? You can't, you can't do the school ones, but you do have, what do you, you have? No, I don't have anything. primary in August. No, Sarah can no, do it. No, no, we don't have anything till town meeting. Oh, I was thinking it was a it's primary. off year. Sean, you had another comment. Yeah, so yeah. I know Todd has a business here in town. What about getting someone that works on ambulances and does that type of thing to take a look at That's it? That's a good idea. And just get their opinion also, not just one opinion. Right. Like, same thing we do with the fire trucks. If something's going to be outrageous, That's like the polytank, we went to someone else to make sure that was truly right. what it was going to be. Uh, can, well, can I just offer one thing on that? Is, is that you got to go back a little bit, probably on the history. This is predates most of us sitting in this room, I think. For A1, it was a, ch a used chassis and a new body, is that correct? So it was, it was not something you know, like the new one that we bought where it was bought that from truck's the a factory. So that it, truck's a remount? Yeah, that truck's a remount. Yeah, yeah 2008. And the, 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 air, the air system was a, an aftermarket, I, and that thing is never worked. So I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I, I, don't, I yeah. don't know that. I, I, get, I, I, see, I, so I don't know if I realized it was a remount. I can tell you my personal experience with yeah. remounts. Is that they're never right. Anymore. It wasn't. It wasn't that used, but the box was from something else. We bought the cabin chassis and had it all put together. Yeah. Okay. Two thousand eight. The, the chassis, the, the air, the air system on that was, it was terrible. It was never worked right. Never worked right. Never worked right. It was an add-on after. First time. First time I took it on a run, it didn't work right. Yeah. yeah. If, right after we got it. If there, if there's a bunch of towns around us that can't yeah. staff the ambulances they have. Can we potentially, and if we're covering their calls, <laughs> is there any way to get creative and work yeah, together exactly. with them? Yeah, at least. I mean, that seems like a misuse of resources. Because then theirs are just running. You're, it's a statewide problem. It is. It's not just here, it's the entire state. No, I know, but if we have an adjacent town that is we, just sitting empty, and we, if we, we have, have the people but not the, the we truck. We address that, and we have a working communication with the fire department to address our staffing issues to get our trucks on the road. So if you're not going to provide us with the trucks, then you know we, we have 
firemen that are taking EMT classes that we are helping pay for. So therefore, we're solving a lot of staffing issues that the state can't because we are fortunate enough to have them. So now you're getting enough for a second crew? Mm -hmm. They yeah. go get our truck. Yeah. They have certified personnel. As long as we have two EMTs in the back, we can have a fire right. and drive, and it's a legal crew. So the situation is different than like when I was running all the Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yes. I respect yes. you guys and what you yes. do and what you yeah, have. It wasn't like that, you know, yeah. Corey. No, absolutely <laughs> not. And right. there, when you were there, you could drive as a CPR. Right. It was a legal crew. Now you cannot. Right. We, we have put people sense. through the EMT class, EMR class, to be able to support right. that. Yeah. Just one more question. You know, this, this goes back to some of the other things. I, I remember a point in time where there was a lot of discussion from the five towns that paid NIMS that NIMS had an issue because they make a lot of money off the transports and they're not covering their first response responsibility. Is that an issue? That is an issue because they're still doing that. They're doing their transports and we're covering their towns. <laughs> yes, so, you know, and I think, you know, once again, you know, we, we went through some, some times and it's fair to say that NIMS helped us. I think we, ought, we have to recognize that. But I, I think this has been a growing problem amongst the first responders, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard this before, where NIMS is doing the transports for Copley, as they should be. That's a part of what they need to do. Yes. And I can completely understand if it's an emergency transport, I think everybody would say, you got somebody you need to right. get to UVM, right. or you got somebody, but if, if they're doing more transports than they are emergency responses, then I think that's an issue because what, what I'm hearing too, and once again, if I'm wrong, please tell me, is that you guys are spending a lot of first response time in the, the NIMS territory yes. because they have two ambulances that are doing not emergency transports. Non -emergency. I've had NIMS, NIMS' supervisor in my office say, my board wants me to do transports. And if he has two trucks scheduled, he sends them both out on transports. Well, you got to too. And, and, and then us in Cambridge are essentially splitting up his area. Which is a little bit of a reversal where we were five, five years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Um, where, and and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, we have had the discussion with Copley, too, that if, uh, if there's an emergency transfer out of the emergency department, especially for a Morristown resident, um, and I'm around, I'm a critical care transport certified guy, uh, we'll, we'll snag that patient. And, and get that patient out because I'm an emergency transfer the emergency department is like a 911 call. So that's a patient that needs a higher level of care immediately and we'll, we'll take that when we can and we've done a couple of those recently. So the question is, so the revenues pay for that second event, you know, the revenues that, that we get by using it. That, the that insurance. Is, yes. I, I think I'm not going to speak for Tina, but I can tell you that there's no. Way I don't see A1 going out very damn often. I'm yeah. sorry to say, I don't. No. I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, and right. maybe it's sitting there ready to go. But when I input ambulance calls, most of all of them are, are the brand new ambulance, and there's very few that are not. Right. And so then, and in, in that, sorry, Bill, but in that defense, A1 has not been running. Well, that would be the reason. <laughs> Crap, yeah. since I've been here. Been out of service all right So yeah. you're going to see A2 because it's the only safe ambulance we have. Right. I, in, in, an, in an ideal world, we would have uh, a, a solid fleet that we would have an up truck, uh, a primary truck and a secondary truck mm -hmm. on a weekly basis. So right. we were spreading out, you know, rotating them through and spreading out the work between the two vehicles. Um, and frankly, right now, I'm, I'm not comfortable throwing A1 in the primary mix. Is it, is it possible to lease, begin a lease on a truck, and then can you break the lease, like after the time frame we need for them to go to the voters and then purchase? It's by a dollar buyout. Usually what happens is the only way that you that, That's the kind of direction I need from you guys about what you would like problem. me to explore. When we, when we didn't have a2 we were we only had a1 we were able to loan the uh hardwick truck the old truck that they got so that might be a solution yeah. so so that's right, right, right. exactly what i was if we take a1 yeah. out of the picture and get something in that we can use until we figure out how we're going to do something that's rel reliable too yes. right. i like sean's idea of having a second opinion though of somebody that really is in the know yeah i can uh, i can call up call around and find I'd, I'd like to get uh you know like a 
a, a certified EVT guy to look at, an emergency yeah. vehicle technician. Exactly. You know, in talking to Todd at Starwood Auto, he right. paints a much gloomer, gloomier picture of yes, sir. fixing that. You're talking about the truck that needs a lot of repair. Yeah. <clears throat> that I hear you say didn't work from day one. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it didn't work well. <laughs> but I think Which we're knows. not in a position to spend. I have, I have oh, no, I, I agree. And that's, again, why I'm looking for direction here. Yeah. I've kind of inherited this truck. You that, certainly have. And Thank you for doing that, too, by the way. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Happy EMS week to us. <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I don't know how to solve this problem. Fix it, buy a used one, buy a new one. I don't, I don't know. But what I would suggest is at the next town meeting, you add an article to acquire a capital fund for rescue. Yeah. We kicked that we don't around have a lot, lot Marianne, and quite I'm sorry. we kicked that around a lot. And and the capital fund in this particular case for EMS really doesn't you know, so the, the penny, I'll, we'll use the penny, let's use but, the half penny. But you wouldn't have to do it. You could right. do half. Plus 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 even the half penny. Financially, it doesn't necessarily make much sense because if it's a half penny, you're 35, 35 35 a year, and our loan payments are only 30,000 a year. For fire, for highway, it makes a lot of sense because they have a, a big fleet of vehicles. So it, it, either way, the voters are approving it, and you're spending the same amount of money. Um, so highway, you have a lot more vehicles. Fire has a lot more vehicles that are a lot more expensive. So it doesn't make sense fiscally to do that because you're, you're only going to buy two vehicles it really doesn't it makes to me it makes sense to keep that in front of the voters all right uh, but then you're, you're really to me i think in this particular case because we've got a capital plan that takes care of highway and we have those long-range purchases so we use that to make sure that when Scott <coughs> has a six hundred thousand dollar ladder truck that he's going to need that we have part of that but in this particular case we're we're putting 35 or thirty thousand dollars a year or something that's 200, um, and it doesn't. It's not the same as highway because there's so much more equipment. It's you know a, a dump truck now is 200 thousand dollars for us. So um, so it's, it doesn't make sense to keep that money in a bank account when you're going to borrow it. You know usually if we have two good ambulances, and I think what happened was we got an off cycle. Realistically, I think our hope was to be able to make a one last at least until the loan was paid off, and then use those loan proceeds to go into the next one, and you keep a cycle. It's not always the case with fire and highway where you're always doing something different. If you get on the right cycle, then you could probably keep, you know, a, a good, decent truck mm -hmm. and, and not do it. So I don't know that that would make good sense financially. How much is a new ambulance? I think we, we well, paid $238,000. Two, yeah, we paid two thirty, and that was equipped. Yeah. That was with the, the stretcher, the power right. lift. So we would be look, we would be looking in the the two ten two twenty range yeah. on something it here. Seven years to raise enough for one. But see, we've kind of changed because, um, and I remember having a conversation with Nate about it, and you no, know, there was a time point where we weren't sure we were going to always have one manned, you know, and say nothing about having the second one be manned. And I think that's what happened. That's why, you know, a one got old, and we didn't worry about it so much because we couldn't man it anyway. Right. You know, it sounds like things yeah. have changed. Right. Our, our primary truck staffing is, uh, I would characterize it right now as rock solid for, for primary crew. That's great. Uh, and for secondary crew, it depends on who's around. Um, right. You know, and you know, we've been fortunate to be able to work with our fire service colleagues. That's great. And uh, they back us up. And if we have know, one, if we have one certified provider who can go, and the fire fire guys can meet us on scene, we're good to go. Yeah. Um, and that cuts down. You know, it cuts down the time it would take a mutual aid ambulance to get okay. here. I'm just purely thinking of taxpayers. I love I, I, I agree. I love rescue, by the way. I'm like, yeah, no, no, I one, understand. no one's carried the rescue flag higher than I have for the past how many years, but I'm thinking about taxpayers yeah. and what they're going to say. I am too. Yeah. I'm thinking about the taxpayers when the ambulance is yeah. available. Yeah, what else so, do you think? It's up to them. Leave it up to them. Right. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I think it looks like we have, well, the option of looking at getting this thing fixed, and from what I'm hearing from many people, it's not worth it. I, I'm, I, I, in my report, I actually said, you know, it's like throwing good money after, you know, and, and good your, money after bad at this and point. And your response to what you found out with the truck actually was uh, a combination of, hmm. I saw your response to that. <laughs> um, he didn't know. Yeah, and, and then um, 
So there's the lease and the buy, and then also the Hardwick option. Well, it's not. It's not a Hardwick option. It's it's an option to to look at a loaner. Right. It's so that's a, that's a right. So there's three through look like three viable options. I see, and I think going to town meeting um, in March and to get a new ambulance is the best route. But what do you do in the meantime? The Hardwick route, or do you um, uh, lease? That's, that's, where I, that's where I'd be coming from. I think spending the five thousand dollars to repair it is a great option to, if you repaired it, but it's not going to because it will never rain good from day one. Right. So you're going to have to to get that to really work. I mean, you may fix the holes in it and you know do a little bit here, but that five thousand to me is not going to bring it up to. No, we have an oil leak again. Yeah, a new explorer and MOU with a neighboring town would be willing to work with us on bringing that second rig down here. Well, you Wait, whether it's car or anybody else, I don't care where it comes from. Right. But to get us through the interim period, if they get the parts of two hands and they can't stop, I don't know how those towns are going to want to face their taxpayers if they've got one sitting and they can't get out. Part of town are they? Not my concern. Part of town are they? Not profit. Hard Hardwick is a. They're not part of the town. Yeah, they're, they're independent, not profit. Independent. I mean, you you probably know I'm willing to go meet with you, you know, with them, with you, to right. see if we can get something or any other ambulance service around here that may have something that will be short term. Yeah, and I think in the meantime, get that yeah. one checked out. Yeah. Maybe Braun has something. Um, right. Braun could do it. You know, um, I think that the thing about a, a long term, let's say the five year lease, and do the answer question. Usually, the only way you can break a lease is if you have not appropriation. So if the, if, if which is it this, pass. Yeah. This is this, this is the, the whole plan he said last week. week. This is the demo truck that he's getting. So, so if you enter into a lease, you know you're you're pretty okay. much. So bound. the option's off the table. Uh, it's close to a twin to the yeah. to the one we've got. It's got the same electronic pack, uh, uh, electric package. But maybe there's the I just got those last week from him. To do a short term loan from somebody on something used. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so lighter, right. you can do it. Right. And, and yes. Yeah. I think the other thing that we, you know, that the board actually ought to consider too, because if NEMS isn't meeting their requirements as a first responder in those communities, I mean, once again, they, they helped us out, but you know, it's always been the understanding that to me that their first contract they have with five towns is to provide first response, and I don't mind if it's a mutual aid, you know, type response where they've got. One ambulance out on an emergency response and one doing a transport. But if they got two ambulances out that are doing transports, it means that they just to be ignored their their contracts with those towns to do their emergency response. Mm -hmm. Did I say that? Yes. So and if you know, and I understand and, that and that's certainly something that's something I, I plan on addressing at the district level. But I think we also at the select board level need to think about addressing that with the other select boards of those towns because yeah. they they actually came to us once and they were right. Yeah, and, fair. Um, you know, I, I know two town administrators that I'm not afraid to call, but I think Judge Charles, towns Charles. That, that the, the board should reach out to select boards and go. They're probably aware, and once again, I don't think it's a question of providing, just like when we, they questioned us, when we didn't have a crew available, rightfully so, they came to us and said, hey, you're not living up your, to your commitment to provide, you know, first response. They did. And we fixed it, and I think we have an obligation for our staff to go back to those towns and go, hey, your, your ambulance provider isn't living up to its obligation to provide first response. We're more than willing to help with mutual aid, mm -hmm. as we've always been. But if they're doing transports and ignoring that, then we're in a position where we're wearing out our staff and our resources to go do that. And, and the income isn't what I'd call significant enough to make a difference, but if I can reach out to Hyde Park and I can reach out to Johnson and explain that, but I think there's what's their other towns that they cover? Eden, Eden, and well, North High Park, which North High Park, well, yeah. High Park, I can take care of. Right. So, but I, I think you know we need to, to make that too. Once again, well, mutual aid is one thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, they also cover Belvedere and Waterville, but we're not the primary for the so Cambridge. Cambridge is now, so I'll, I'll talk to Johnson in, yeah. in High Park then. and get a second opinion on the ambulance on they want. Okay, we'll do. So and then if a short-term loaner. Maybe okay. I can I can flesh I can flesh that. I can I can call Robert Gleason and flesh that out and see, see what, what he's see got. What he's got. Yeah. yeah. But thank you, thank okay. you for bringing it to our attention. Yeah.
And we, it, this wasn't a dig on you guys at all. Yeah. You know that. No, no, I understand that. I understand that. I just, uh, you know, I, uh, to, to send the truck out and then suddenly find it can't be inspected yeah. and then come to you with, with yeah. hand you that grenade uh, right. in, in they, August. They talked August. about that a couple of years ago, too. Yeah. Yeah. How it's not that sound. You know, so I imagine it's even a lot less sound now. Yeah. Um, we we just have had, we've been on the side of the road on the interstate probably a handful of times in the last six months right. with nurses, right, and respiratory therapists in a one broke, broke in the down. same spot every time. <laughs> that's not good. So that's why it has been sitting and you don't see it out right. much because it doesn't do hills and it doesn't do corners. That's not good. It doesn't, it doesn't do corners well. I know that. <laughs> why do you want to coast? Uh, while I'm here, do we want to discuss the, the roster yeah. additions and deletions? Yeah. Uh, so we've got three for deletion. Uh, Steve Foster, yes. who we approved just a couple of months ago, and I've yeah. never heard from him again. Yeah. Uh, okay. Col uh, Colby Massey uh, needs to come off as a volunteer. Okay. And Jennifer Piet, uh, she's uh, busy with work, another service that she's the chief of, and she's also going through med school. So those three uh, respect come my requests, they come off. And uh, we need to add Carolyn Grant. Uh, she's about to test as an EMT. We'd like to go ahead and bring her in, start her orientation process. And once she's certified, she'll be ready to go. I'll make a motion. Chair, I make a motion to remove Steve Foster, Colby Massey, and Jennifer Piet from the EMS volunteer roster. Second. I have a, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I make a motion to add Carolyn Grant to the Morristown EMS volunteer roster. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. Anything Thank else for me? Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. All right, next, right away permit application for Vermont Electric. Yeah. Roland has reviewed this with the engineer. Um, I talked to him. So, Roland still with the location and what they're putting in. Nothing um, random, close to the tow line, dirt road, underground. So, you got the mandatory three feet below the bottom of the ditch? Five. Five feet? Yeah. Perfect. Roland will inspect it before they bury it? I can have him do that. Please. Okay. Do we need a motion? Yes, please. The motion we approve the right away. Uh, second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? As long as Roland is inspecting. Yes. Yeah. With that was part of the motion. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So by. Next, approve warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. TA report. Um, yeah. Just to update um, on the town paving, the current fiscal year paving. So we did <clears throat> finish up the, the current contract. So Cochran Road, Stancliffe Road, and a mile of, of land off road, those things that we already had in the contract to finish pipe, finish those up last week. So I did take a ride with, with Roland last week just to look at the one mile from, I think, the Fitzgerald Road on out that gets us through that hump on Randolph Road. That's still leave another mile and a half on, on Randolph Road to do in the future. Just so everybody's looking at that. That'll be in the RFP that I'll get out soon, I hope. From Fitzgerald up to where they paved the sand no, no, that it won't. That's that's really probably about a, two and a half miles. So we're going to go from Fitzgerald towards Stowe a mile, but that'll get us through that little valley that oh, dip right, there. Right. And, oh, get down. Down. and then Bob asked me to take a look at another spot on further up. That that's pretty bad right By now. Andy Valkyrie's farm in the halfway through the field. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's awful. Right. It's awful. <laughs> So we'll, we'll look at putting those two things for sure on the, on the next contract. Does the town do the, the, the lines? Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. The state does that, um, and they'll do that. They'll, they'll do the, they come through later in the year after everybody's paved. Oh, so the state comes through and, and does all the lining for us. Okay. On, all, on all the roads? No, only in the class two, class ones. But, but they did just like do Elmore Street. 
And I'm you know, kind of strange that they did that because they're going to. You know, that's my next topic. Yeah, they, 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 there's really no rhyme or reason sometimes when they come through. It's a contract that the state puts out to go through and do state highways and class two roads and class one roads. So there's no Mark real time. Not talking about right now. Yeah, exactly. And it's always been a problem. It's never been solved. Um, so it's it's just been one of those things. It's but they put it in the right place. place. That was good. Up yeah. Elmore Street. Yeah. That's good. But it's all getting ready to come up. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, that was another thing. The crosswalks. Right. So just to update, the Class One paving project is going to start June seventeenth. Wow. Um, and the, the completion date, in fact, is kind of mandatory completion <coughs> date is August thirty first, or else they go into liquidated damages after that. So, um, so you're, you're going to see that, and you'll see a, a lot of things moving on that very shortly. They're going to come in, and start setting up the sign package, all that other fun stuff on the tenth, and then they'll actually start doing the the milling of the two inches off of it um, the the following week. So that project's coming up. So all that stuff that they're painting out there now, it's going to be gone <laughs> soon. So, and that's the reason why we haven't worried too much about the crosswalks because it's all going to get milled up. It doesn't make sense to put the paint the crosswalks, and they'll come in and repaint all that stuff for us afterwards so um a lot of people are asking about it and that's why it's good for andrew to have that right so you know but that project um i'm encouraging people to follow front porch forum because the state will give us the schedules the weekly schedules every friday um they've already been in contact with us and we'll put that stuff out on the friday front porch forum for the public to see so they know what the schedule is and what's going on with that you know um once again the core of the downtown will be done at night in the residential areas during the day but there's no way that it's not not going to impact traffic mm -hmm. um, and the reason why we haven't really worked too much on the, the pleasant street parking lot this year is because while they're milling and paving parking is going to be a problem on the other areas so we don't want to interrupt parking any more than we have to so um but we'll, we'll keep looking at so any should we this is a very minor thing but it's something everyone enjoys uh fourth of july parade they're, we've already talked about that. They won't be working on holidays. No, so. but it's still going to, like, are things going to be torn up, rerouted? <clears throat> like, they won't really be tearing anything up, per se, because they're just going to mill two inches off. Okay. So, you know, the roads are still going to be passable. Okay. Um, so I, I don't think there's anything in there that will impact traffic to that degree. It's not going to be like 100 was. No, 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 not at all. No, where they took it up. So they're just milling and then repaving. So okay. I, you know, um, you, you'll see maybe the manhole sticking up at some points in time, but Scarf they'll reset fire. all that. But I, I don't think it'll be anything that will definitely impact where the road will be closed other than during the actual milling, it'll be traffic controlled and traffic will be slow. Okay. So, but I would encourage people in the name of, you know, you know, to, to if, you, if you don't need to come to the downtown, you know, or if you're going someplace else, then find an alternate route because it may be faster. Um, but you know, we're, we're going to get this done. And it, it, from that schedule, really, that's, that's a pretty quick schedule to get that done. It's two and a half months. Are we going to be straightening out the crosswalk we, we've discussed here? Yes. The before? Yes. Down here by the senior center? Yes. And the senior center, once again, is getting the bump outs and the, and the signal. Um, so the, that goes in. And then the one over by, I think that's the other one, one we changed, Todd, was the one over by um, the Union Bank parking lot. Thompson, where yeah. it, it comes back onto the, the the other side of the, the we did upper main street too i think yeah okay. upper main okay so yeah we so we we fixed those and got those in the right spot okay. so and this it's more so if you look at the time frame on that i think the pavement goes for it but they're changing out all the signs you know so there, there's a lot of stuff that goes with it not just paving any place where that's not ada compliant for a crosswalk they're going to make ada compliant so the, the, it's the whole piece of that that goes with it so we're on the move on that one. And once again, it started shortly. And I think we'll go pretty quick. Seems, anyway, we hope. Um, I put some, just a little update. Do have a pit. You know, we're still right now, we're in the process since the weather has finally allowed us to get up in there. Well, we've got the state agencies coming in and doing their survey of the area. We are going to have to do an archeological survey of the area where we're at. And that involves going through and actually tilling up some of the land for them to inspect and see if there's artifacts there from uh, around 8,000 to 12,000 years ago. Um, so 
that's just part of the process. The, the state will do it. We all we have to do is arrange for the, the tractor and the plow to go up there. And, and if they find artifacts, I will warn you now that we'll have to do a, a more in-depth uh, study of the area. So, but set up so, a dig. What's that? You set up a dig. <laughs> Yeah, so I just wanted to let you know what's going on. Once again, you know, it's, it's right now, I don't have documents or anything, you know, for you to look at, um, or even I have seen, but, you know, the, the state agencies are all coming in right now and, and doing the reviews of the area just to, so that they can do it and sign off or not sign off or, or tell us what we need to do for, for anything else. I wish Francis Favre was still here. He'd probably tell us what was here 8,000 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> From what I heard, he transferred all that knowledge to Todd, so Todd's kind of It may have been a one of the <laughs> so anyway, but it is moving along and we are getting there, but it's just one of those little you know, bumps in the road that we have to get through. On the mowing update, um, right now I have bought a mower and some, some equipment to go with it. So as far as the cemeteries, the highway crew is, is going to go out and, and mow the cemeteries this week. Um, and then it gives me enough equipment to see if I can't just take care of town properties this year. And then we have the other mowing contract that we approved tonight to do the cemeteries. So we're gonna have the cemeteries done as best as we can um, before Memorial Day. And then we're trying to get up, caught up with the rest of the stuff. So now we'll have the contract in place, but we are gonna be able hopefully to get the cemeteries done once again, based on weather, That's the rain, right. you know, the rain's been slowing down everything that we do. So. Um, I would like to find somebody to at least take care of Oxbow for us this summer rather than the, the town crews just because it takes so much time to mow the Oxbow, but I'm not having a whole lot of luck finding people to mow for us. Maybe Apex will do it. I'm going to talk to them. I want to get the cemeteries done, you know, <coughs> and get that piece and see if, then see if they have time to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, but there's so much going on down there, you know, that I'll just see, I'll see what they can give me another price, but I wanted to get the cemeteries off, kind of off my plate and move forward. So, you know, the rest of the stuff with, we, we bought a zero return, we can probably keep up with the rest of the mowing, but you know, the off goes that one little added piece that could push us over. Okay. So that's what's going on with that. So you know, at least the, hopefully we can get the cemeteries done. Um, I got a question on mowing. If somebody volunteered wanted to go down and mow it, would that, would they be in trouble? No, as long as we know that they're volunteering. I mean, there should be something that says that we know they're volunteering. You can do it, Brian. Well, okay. I go by the uh, monument every day, and I know that right now you have nobody to mow it. I said, "What we're, if I took my mower and down?" Yeah, yeah. If you want to, uh, yes, please. So I want to make sure that's yeah, that's that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure that I want to make sure that that's done before Memorial Day too for yeah. the ceremony. Whenever I talked to the, the street crew about that, getting that and take care of. So, yeah, it just you know everything kind of fell apart on me at once, but I think we got things turned around and moving in a good direction on that. So just a question, I wonder if I... You gonna drive your tractor down the road to the red flag hanging off the back, Robert? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, oh, on my wagon. wagon. You're getting, my wagon. You're getting Richard Chase in <laughs> No, we can't do that. Press Thank you, Brian. Right. Joking aside, thank you for doing that. It's, uh, appreciate yes, it. I would appreciate it. Yeah, it'd be a big help to us. Maybe Rich ought to bring a weed washer. <laughs> so, um, just, just a quick reminder that we do have a, a road hearing scheduled for two rows on June 19th at 530 was James Road first Eric I don't remember uh, so. it's Bellinger Lane we'll, we'll put out a reminder for for 530 on the 19th and I have three more requests for the select board to consider uh, on one of those is the Moyle view it's off up off of uh, Needle Eye, mm -hmm. just on the other side of the bridge uh, there's Meadow Drive which is out on Route 100 um, and then there's uh, Sholin, is that the correct? Sholin Road, yeah. Sholin Road. So I've got those three just in the last week, so I'll probably be scheduling something soon for that. I know we don't have a policy. Judy's asked me to put it back on the agenda. My recommendation is go ahead and have the hearings on site because it does take so while, a long time to get those set up because of the statutory process. And then if they don't meet standards or if they don't meet your policy from there on, at least you've had that on site and you can always right. say no. So I'm just going to go ahead and get those set up. Forward so on we're those. just doing one on the 19th? We're doing two. We're doing James Road and Bellinger. And a zoning vote, maybe. Meadow Road. What's that? B Belanger Road? Belanger. Oh, yeah. Belanger. 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 Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Is that, we're doing a visit or we're just doing a meeting? No, you have to do an on site hearing. Yeah. So where's okay. the first one? Where's James? James Road. Okay. Off the left. 
cool uh, behind there, behind the shop. Cool. 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 Great show of hands. Top of the hill? And no. No, no. He's no. Middle school. Behind the price chopper. He's middle school. Off so it's off from who I know? Yeah, off from who I know. You know what that is. Yeah, I know. Pave calls us out. Okay. So those two, we'll confirm that again as we get and closer. That's a Sunday, right? 19th is a Wednesday. Of June. Oh. I think you said May before, so I think it's June. Oh, did I? No, June, I'm sorry. I probably yeah. did. I won't be here. Oh, fast. 19th. It's a long day. It's funny, it was on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that, are you when we do these site visits will you already have assessed these roads to see if they meet the standard um I, you know the, well, i'll have Roland go look at them because i'm worried about the turnarounds on some of these yeah. um Put just snow. because you know just i'll have a look at them and i'm you know i've been giving them anybody that's come to me i've been giving them a copy of the road policy as far as you know what the the roads have to be constructed to mm -hmm. i've explained it to them that you know trees and not being wide enough and enough gravel on the roads are usually the, the first thing that we run into, just so there's no surprises, mm -hmm. and you know, and, and enough room for us to, to get in and work our trucks. Um, so I'll have one go work at them. So just to get his feedback, and hopefully I can have roll on site with those too. So, but I think James Road is paved already. James Road is paved. So I mean, you know. So as we go through these hearings, I want like to put a bug in the board's ear that when we talked about the Monash development and we passed that, we knew this was gonna open the floodgate for these shorter dead end roads to come before us. Just keep it in the back of your mind that as we approve some of these and bring it on, that's more snow plowing. That is, you know, in the wintertime particularly that's the biggest concern and staffing for the highway department may need to be adjusted sooner than later. So it just depends on what we find on the roads, how many are actually brought on board if they are. Just just throwing that out there for folks to remember. Dan, I have a question on, on roads. Did, did you find out anything about that pavement piece on Hudson? Oh, sure, I can talk about that. Actually, I met with the state last week on that. Um, and they finally admitted that maybe, well, they haven't admitted, but they are willing to consider us paving a section there about three foot wide and filling that hole in out there because that's what they permitted so we couldn't change it you know where you want to talk about Todd the ones that, that we we didn't like it when they they just when they made um show bands do that to shift it, it over so um when, I had, when upper munson was built the state dictated changes to the town section of what is the top of munson where it's 15 right. and it has cut the cut the radius right there right and now because of the way the alignment of the road people come around and you really have to keep churning to, to stay in, in the, the, the correct lane. Mm -hmm. And people never did get used to it and they cut off the road and it's in the state right away and it's, it's part of that state 1111 permit that you have to do to work out there. So I can't change it without their permission. So I did meet with them last Wednesday. And, you know, they came up and looked at it and they, at least the first person I talked to said, you're right, this isn't working. That doesn't mean that the agency of transportation will, will give me final approval to do it. But what I really want to do is start go about three foot wide and widen that back out about probably what it used to be and i think that'll solve a lot of the problem but there were cars and you, luckily there was even a tractor trailer that tried to turn there and, and they can't stay in the travel portion of lane or they are in you know the other lane when they come around there so if one person agrees with me that doesn't mean i can get permission to fix it but i'm working on it thank you okay is that it that's it thank you okay. Questions for Dan? Thanks, I, have, Dan. I have a quick comment to the paving. I just request that you pave Cochrane Road. I have a 15 year old um, in driver's ed right now. It's made me really aware of driving again. Um, mm -hmm. Lines are really important. I didn't realize how important they were until I'm trying to well, teach you said, a kid. You said painting, not paving. Yeah, painting. Oh, it yeah. just got paved. It would be great if the lines were painted for mm -hmm. our so youth learning how to drive. <laughs> so you can tell him he's on the wrong side. Well, you know, so good he can tell himself. Good experience because they won't you be able to get there for a while. Because we can get a like, volunteer in the mall, get the child to go out with his brush and paint them. He's doing council. Missy and I did, the, the boys have school trips coming up. We said we got some teenagers if you need some mowing. <laughs> 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 But they have fun though. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a class we read on typically we don't. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Select board concerns. 
Judy. I don't have any. I just, I, now that the snow is gone, it's really the um, area that was uh, paved and the rocks were put in the sidewalk as you're going out of town on 100. It looks so nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does. Yeah. I did, I just, it just opened up after the snow left. Like, wow. Chris. Uh, there's just some comments this evening on street cleanup efforts. I don't know. I saw that. I haven't had a chance to respond. To that. The guys have been doing their best, but just like this morning, you know, temperatures were there, but too wet. So, but they've been trying to fight the weather to go out and sweep. And I'll, I'll talk to Doug and see what his schedule is, and I'll reply to that. All right. Thanks. Brian. Yep. My, mine was the moment. <laughs> Eric. I, we started off the meeting with some. Uh, Quick derogatory comments about our highway department and the job they do during the winter time. I just want to counter that by saying that, uh, in, in light of the year we had, which everybody agrees was extraordinary, I think their efforts were extraordinary. Mm -hmm. They did a great job. I think uh, I, I don't know what our accidents look like around town, Chief, but I don't think they're any worse than any of the. No, no worse. No. And I, I can tell you from the only who drive outside of our town lines at other communities. And I can tell you there's a marked difference on our back roads, how much sand we put down, and how much we take care of our highways in this community. And I just uh, want to make sure our highway guys know that they're appreciated. Thanks. That's good. And I was just going to talk about the crosswalks. I said that several people asked me when we're going to paint the crosswalks, and I know it's the paving. But to get that paving timeline is important. To get it in the paper is important. And, um, we can do that so everybody knows that we'll do the crosswalk as soon as it's paid. We're not even doing the state Right. Yeah. Because you do it. That's all I have. Do we have any other business? Just one more thing for your best friends. Um, just a reminder this Wednesday, 6 o'clock, we're doing a quick out of the building mm -hmm. uh, for EMS week. Nice. And uh, it'd be great if you get it. What's for dinner? Uh, whatever Copley's sending us over to cook. <laughs> Whatever, whatever they're sending, we're grilling. So nice. That's, might be there. Do I hear a motion right there? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Brian, the dog, when do you want to do it this week?